your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your, your mom, mom and, and dad. dad. Cheers. Cheers to the Love is, Love Blind, is Blind episodes 10, 11, and 12, the finale. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, no, 17, No, 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 no. Don't, don't confuse everyone. <laughs> Let's not confuse Say it audience. again. So what are, what, are we, what are we doing? We're covering 10, 11, and 12, and 12 is the yes. finale wedding episode. Yes. Okay, got it. That's got what it. we're covering today. Can I start off by saying something? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, through the the ups, the downs, the trauma, the horror, mm -hmm. yes. the the absolute disgust of moments during this <laughs> specific yes. season, do you know what's something that really stood out to me? And what? I don't know if this is like everyone's talking about it. Maybe I'm missing it and it's like very hot on the streets yeah. right now. Um, what I've really been noting is I don't think I've ever seen anyone brush their teeth as aggressively as Jimmy does. I mean, yeah. I worry for his enamel. <laughs> the man brushes his teeth like it's like a car wash. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, you know what? I it it's it's kind of like you know if you go too hard you're gonna hit the back of your throat yeah, almost like you're like just your gagging yourself. Like, he, like, <laughs> like it's it's real aggressive. It's, it's real like, aggressive. It's, it's not like a construction gentle. zone the way that uh -huh. he handles it. I mean, shout out. I, he's brushing his teeth hard and well. Yeah. It's better than I'm doing. Maybe that's what his dentist wanted, but I feel like it's always no. like jet like brush gently. Be careful of your precious enamel. They we always only say have like get enamel. soft toothbrushes. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's very soft bristles, but like I just I guess I was thinking, you know, considering like he brushes really hard uh -huh. considering he had that taquito accident of 2023. Yeah, the taquito gate. I mean, I think <laughs> we never talked about the. No, taquito. we never talked about. And, and, and also, what an amazing, um, just bullshit excuse for not kissing someone is because is because you cut your <laughs> lip or you you like bit your he lip while his lip, eating. I think. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that was the problem. That it was Does the taquito accident. Does everyone remember when they had one of their parties when they were in the Dominican Republic? Yeah. Apparently, he was just chomping down on taquitos, which I get it. Delish. Delicious. But he said that he either burned his mouth or hit his no, he tooth bit on it. He bit he it bit hard on it. Something on a taquito yeah. to the point that it got mentioned numerous times throughout the season like a week later when Chelsea was like wanting to Mac with him mm -hmm. and he was like, I told you, I, I it's, she, he's like, it's not personal. It's because I had the taquito incident of 2023. And I'm like, my guy, if you can brush that hard. Yes. I don't know how much I believe this taquito well, listen, incident. Babe, I would <laughs> love to make love to you, but that's not going to happen because I bit my lip on a taquito. Like if anyone ever says that, just know they're lying to you. Cause that unless unless their mouth is an open wound and they're you know in a though? helicopter on the way to a hospital and you're trying to hook up with them in the helicopter, they're lying to you if they're telling you that that when they bit their <laughs> lip eating a taquito is the reason why they can't. I it's will like, say though, here, I dude. will say though, a lot of men. I mean, one Babies. little ouchie and it's just like, yeah. oh my gosh, like must be nursed back to health. Like maybe that's Jimmy's situation yeah. where he's like, he, got a, he bit his lip a little bit and it's like, I'm going <sighs> to hear you talk about it nonstop for, Kind of you mama's know, boy product, right? When you're like, you've been, you've been taken care of very gent, very tenderly over a long time. I mean, maybe. I think I may, that that might be what it is, which, you know, we love know. to see. We love to see someone taking care of someone tenderly. Yeah, but I'm just, tender you know, tear. it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I can just envision like, you know, being nine months pregnant and like in the beginnings of labor. And he's like, I bit my lip. And like, that's why we're at the hospital. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and you're sitting there like holding your belly in pain while he's just like getting his lip figured out. And, uh, and they just send him home with like Neosporin. You know what I mean? Like, at least I'd be like, give me a stitch at least. Like, even if I don't need one, just give me one so that it looks like this is more aggressive. But, you know, it's like people, it's kind of like, it's kind of like people, it, it, I feel like people are raised on this too. Like, this is like, 
when you go to the doctor versus when you don't go to the doctor. Like you hold out or you go. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And Jimmy it's, definitely hits me as a guy that goes immediately. You think so? He's like, oh, I have a little sniffles. Doctor. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like I bit my lip. Doctor. A quick doctor. Yeah. Visit. It's just like I always got to make, you maybe, know what I mean? You know, it's as like, far as we know, maybe when they were, you know, on their vacation, he did a quick visit I'm to sure, the hotel I, doctor. I, I, no, I'm sure that he had like the, the staff. Emer- at, er person point, on there like come check it for at him one and they're point like, when yes. they were, like waiting in the ocean yeah he's like his bathing suit rubbed up against his legs for a while gave him a little, a little bit of a chafe. rash and he's like i think it's a jellyfish sting yes. and so you go to the and they're like this <laughs> just looks know? like a rash and he's like no i want you to check i think it's man of war you know what i mean he has i got stung by a man of war i know you did that was crazy. gnarly um but yeah, yeah. I mean, that was just all time. She's just like, yeah, I want to have sex and this and that. And he's like, well, I can't because I bit my lip two weeks ago. It's, it's anyway, really I'm bad. Just, I'm just curious about this whole the whole the crossover of the 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 aggression of brushing yeah. to taquito incident to stress. He he stress brush it, brushes for he sure. Stress he's, brushes. He's a, he's a, that's a hard hard stress to say. brushes. He stress stress brushes. Say that five stress. Times. Brushes, <laughs> stretch brushes. <laughs> I will say I'm guilt. I've been guilty of that. You stress. You stress. Brush? Not stress brushing, but brushing hard. Because in your brain, you think to yourself, okay, yeah. If I'm trying to get um a stain out or yeah. something, right? Hard brush, hard like hard bristles, hard brush. Right. That should work, right? Like the harder you brush, the more it'll get out. Right, right. Little do you know that there's this thing called enamel. Mm. that you can Tell literally wear off mm-hmm. right and so like i didn't know until i had like receding gums yeah and then my dentist was like yo do you brush hard i'm like oh yeah super hard with extra hard bristles he's like what you like and jimmy have that in common i know so i do understand now here's the thing though i brush hard but i don't brush aggressively he brushes he goes in out in out hardcore yeah, yeah. so he clearly maybe just a little therapy you know, sure. I, I know that once I went to therapy, I started getting the softer bristles. I think I would suggest therapy, no shade to uh, a lot of people on this specific <laughs> season. No shade. Agreed. We all we love therapy. We go. You know what I mean? Yes. I'm just saying maybe maybe more people specifically from this season mm-hmm. should join us in a therapy journey. I completely agree. <laughs> I think that uh, we all need it. And some t- and luckily, some of us weren't put on television to see how much we need it. Yeah. You know, what was interesting is I saw Chelsea hop on. I don't know if it was like an Instagram story or yeah. if it was a TikTok or something. And she was like, hey, I know. Just imagine how I feel watching like a year later almost oh my god and she and you you do grow a lot you know in a of year course. you do grow a lot and then all of a sudden you you know when you're removed from certain uh situations toxic filming environments yeah. all of these things you know yeah. that you all that you realize oh maybe you know here, there was a, a certain way that i responded or reacted that i'm learning about myself yes. um but she was like yeah you think it's bad imagine how i feel watching that. yeah yeah that's that's horrific I could never. And I will say, shout Chelsea, out. Like you know Chelsea, what I mean? Shout out to everybody. I could never. And I will say this, Chelsea, love you. You seem like a really nice person. I'm sure in your real life, whatever, whatever. I will say, if that was me watching that, that would be tough. Like the like nice the way the is. way that you argued was pretty cringe and pretty tough. And I will say, if I knew that was coming out, like in a year, I'd be like. Uh, like knowing, think, like waiting and well, knowing that's going to be dropping. During uh, one of their arguments, apparently she had been drinking, right? So right. then you even are like, is it fuzzy? And then you're watching it How back much, and then there's what, certain what editing and you're like, oh my God, like, uh, I mean, what a nightmare. Yeah, anyway, not, okay, we're going to get, let's get into yeah, this. Let's, let's get into this. Okay. Like, so we said at the top, we are covering everyone, please listen, episodes 10, 11, and 12, which essentially are from Jeremy chatting with his mom um, about the situation with Laura all the way through the last most recent episode. So if you have not watched the finale episode yet, just as a heads up, we're diving right into it and giving all of our thoughts and opinions and takes. So um, don't want to spoil that if you haven't watched the final episode, but that's what we're doing 10 through 12. As they say in the biz, spoiler alert. That was so bad. Um, (laughs) Have you guys ever heard of that? It's a new term. That just made my whole body. Yeah. The ick arose for Ooh, one second. Ooh, <laughs> we dipped, rose and dipped for the first time in a while. Just right? Wondering. Love that. Okay, continue. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be covering on this. We're going to go 
couple by couple, starting off with Jeremy and Laura, the couple who yeah. we're going to start off, you know, with the couple that then we end up having the least amount of uh, uh, the, the the shortest length yes. of a relationship with. And we're going to go couple by couple um, and make our way that way. And then also don't forget the reunion is coming up. Yeah. So there are some things that are floating around. Obviously, if you don't know, there's the tea about Jeremy being previously engaged. There's mm-hmm. the tea about Trevor who we thought we absolutely adored, yeah, who ended up apparently like, the su- like maybe the sweetest allegedly guy there. coming on with with who was in a relationship, and this whole thing yeah. was an act. Um, so there's a lot of that drama and news floating around, which we will get into more um, in our episode where we recap the reunion. Do not right. forget, there's going to be a Love Is Blind reunion. I am, so, I am literally on pins and needles for this well, reunion. It's so hectic. This reunion is going to be so hectic. It's going to be absolutely bananas. Nick and Vanessa have a lot cut out for I them. I really hope everyone shows up. Oh, I was thinking. About you know what that. I mean? I can, I like, can see I can see one of Jeremy them. not showing up. You know what I mean? Well, like, Jeremy earlier today, I saw. I, I went on his Instagram quick, and he posted a Q and A, and he was like, "I can't answer." these questions that are about to come out now he's like but give me two weeks and oh you're oh, gonna hear oh so then he is gonna, he is he's milking it he's using his or influence. he's not gonna show up and then oh. he's just gonna do it on his own but he has or to zoom wait in or whatever some, some whatever of them do yeah whatever yeah. that bs is but i think jeremy's gonna come out swinging love it <laughs> I mean, that's what makes a good reunion. But anywho, we're going to be chatting about like more of the details mm-hmm. about the drama with the Jeremy um, off camera, about the uh, the Trevor um, off camera, that type of mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. We'll dive into that more when we recap the reunion, which we will keep you updated about when that specific date will drop. But that um, is going to be airing next week. Great. Love anywho, it. so today, 10 through 12, um, before we officially dive in, yes. we do have to take a pause. Family, you know, as much of a mess as this season has been. And it's been a mess. Something that brings me personally joy is sitting in front of my fireplace with a cozy blanket, turning on the finale and pouring a nice glass of Chardonnay or Pinot Gris. Okay, she loves a Chard. She loves a Pinot Gris. If you enjoy a glass of wine like me, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I found the most personalized wine club that has amazing wines and exclusive perks. It's called First Leaf. You all know that we have been proper fans of First Leaf for years because it's just the best. It's simply the best. The best. The best. As First Leaf members, we get to discover new wines we're guaranteed to enjoy. That's because First Leaf gets to know your unique preferences. To start, you answer a few quick questions on their website about what flavors you like, how often you drink wine, and if you prefer red, white, or rose. I personally, big Sav Blanc. He loves a Sav Blanc. King. And a Shard. And a Shard, too. Yeah. <laughs> Based on our answers, First Leaf curated an amazing selection of wines for us. And when we rate those wines, our wine selection gets even more tailored, which it is It really amazing. is truly incredible. We have the same wine taste, so we answered together. And the Shards and the Pinot Gris and the Sav Blancs and all of that they sent us were amazing and they continue to be. The shipments get more tailored to us and better every time. I'm also obsessed because it's really helped us discover new wines that have become our mm-hmm. like official favorites. You discover new wines, it's really fun. Um, and best of all, I get to choose when I want my box delivered and how often I get new assortments of wine. Being part of the First Leaf Wine Club also has its perks. As a member, I get access to their incredibly helpful wine concierge. So fancy. So if I want wine pairing advice or to talk about the wines in my box, I can always speak with one of their experts, which is amazing. Plus, I get member exclusive pricing on every order. I'm obsessed. Join the club today and discover new wines you'll love with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash momdad to get your first box. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T. L E A F dot com slash mom dad. Try dot com slash mom dad. All right. Okay. Let's officially start with Jeremy and Jeremy. L- Jeremy and Laura. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so the last time in episode nine, we saw Jeremy. Let Laura know, aka she found out and discovered. AKA she grilled him, <laughs> followed him, knew everything, called him out. He lied. He let her know. He kindly, he kindly, gracefully informed her, informed her that he had been 
um, chatting it up with Sarah Ann until yeah. about 6 a.m. the mm. night before when he went out, okay? Mm -hmm. And she was pushing, saying, where were you? He's like, I was at the, the parking lot of the bar the whole time. And she's like, lies, I followed your your mm -hmm. location because you thought you were a sneaky, sneaky guy. Mm -hmm. Let's showing me your location, thinking it would make me trust you. And I followed you and I saw that you went uptown, which is where Sarah Ann lives. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Um, and Precisely. I just want to say this about jeremy jeremy is like all my girl like all my girlfriend's worst nightmare mm. it's like the idea of oh i end up dating a guy jeremy mm -hmm. who's blowing raspberries on a rubber ball during our honeymoon oh, suite yeah. and i'm like you know what Ugh. i'm having to push down all my ick but I know at least Jeremy's going to stay with me. That's and then true. he's the guy who's got, who's chatting it up on the side with someone else and like emotionally cheating on you. Oh my God. It's definitely <laughs> like, a worst case nightmare. scenario to be like, I'll give this guy a chance. And then he, he's the one that cheats on you. Like, like that Laura, is like worst case like, scenario. Laura was dude. starting to get such an ick from him. She couldn't stand She's him at like, so oh, many moments. Like, are you my little brother? I can't really tell. That was the energy, 100%. right? When they were, when he was in that pool doing all that stuff. I think that's probably where a lot of her rage comes. Is oh, the, you mean like, when she got real mad? Yeah, it's like the embarrassment. In like the embarrassment, that's the energy I get. Yeah. Is like it's it's less to do with the fact that like, like I think she did care, obviously care about him, but I think it's less to do with the fact that she's that obsessed with him, and it's more to do with the fact that like, like I didn't like you at first. You grossed me. me out at first. You icked me out. I pushed <laughs> through that, and then you burned me. You yeah. know? Yeah. No, I I completely get that, and you know what? I don't blame her at all. Right. I feel the exact same way. I'd be right. like ab. Absolutely furious. Again, within two weeks of knowing me, you're like sharing your location and lying to me. Right. And like going and meeting up with Sarah. <laughs> that, that conversation we talked about it last week, but it was just so bad because it was just like, it was like and every he's turn he's like, sunglasses did, on the whole time. That didn't happen. And then she's like, yeah, I do. He's like, okay, fine. It did happen. Like that was uh, uh, the case. So let's talk about the mom. So him, yeah, we start episode 10, uh, Jeremy meeting up with his mom, which yeah. Absolutely was sending me because he, I think he gave her partial truths. He told, did tell his mom that he did drive her back. He was honest yes. about that, that he wasn't in the back parking right. lot of the bar the right. whole time. Right. But then, you know, he was saying this whole thing, which Sarah Ann stands by to later, where she's like, we never even went inside. And right. I'm like. I mean, they definitely like probably made out. I'm like, come on. You know on. what I mean? Like maybe they didn't no, have sex like, or something, but they definitely like made out. I swear we didn't cross a line. I'm yeah, like, you, no you sit and you talk till six in the morning in a parked car. And, That's like, And you got busted on every lie, not because you offered the information, but because you got busted. So every time you'd be like, no, I just, I literally just ran into her for a second. And she's like, like, well, I know where you went. Well, actually I did. Well, actually I did. Well, yeah, I, like, they're like, it's crazy. We drove his like hot Cadillac to a lookout point over the city, yeah. but we never kissed yeah, exactly. at all. We just talked we, about We talked like, till six We just talked about closure. And that's thing too that he was saying that it was like more of a closure right. energy and then obviously when we talked to sarah ann later ad talks to sarah ann later mm -hmm. and when we see jeremy and sarah ann later it's, it's like no, no he was like i'm ending it right. with laura which is wild to think about because laura and jeremy were doing well until she caught him lying so he was just out after meeting her parents yeah basically telling sarah ann like right i'm gonna end it with laura but i will say now, I mean, not to defend Jeremy at all, but I will say the meeting of her parents was a horrific sight. No, I understand. And I would have broken up with her there. And that's like the thing. it was so bad. Like the humiliation, the like slashing, the like the amount of. And I know that that's clearly like a technique of hers to kind of like it's a defense mechanism, something. So I'm sure that she was using that as a defense mechanism about insecurity in their relationship. Yeah, of course. But it was so bad that I was like, dude. It was bad, right? <laughs> so like, so so it, definitely things were not like, didn't feel good. No, like, no, I understand that. But I'm saying technically they were like telling each other it sure, went well. Sure. I love you. We're right. going to get married. And then that's as far as like, you know, what they had communicated. Mm -hmm. And then he runs off and is telling Sarah Ann, right. I'm going to end things with Laura. Right. I said this last week and I'm going to really stand by this, especially now seeing how everything wrapped with Jeremy. And Sarah Ann, Jeremy is the Tom Sandoval of this franchise. I yeah, fully believe sure. that Jeremy sneaky, sneaky talked to Sarah Ann. And because of the way that Laura was responding and being 
and him calling her out for it the way he did, especially later at that lake party. I think he thought the editing would serve him. Yeah. Like how Sandoval was like, you know, Ariana and I will break up and then like Rachel and I will be running off into the yeah. sunset together and everyone will cheer us on. Right. Type vibe. Kind of like a, there's like, an, I think, uh, like yeah. how you how could you possibly this think that delusional type? thing delusional, where it's like the word, yeah. I think that that was his plan where it was like oh mm. the editing is going to not like Laura they're gonna see it as a clean break. right and they're gonna be like wow poor Jeremy having to handle Laura and her criticism yeah and now Sarah Ann and I will busted. run off into the sunset whoopsie daisy whoopsie buddy. daisy <laughs> big time it, also he was the one like texting Jimmy being like, yo, have you seen Jess? Absolute smoke. You know what I mean? So he yeah, was always like a Kardashian but I'm just the in fact, the gym. Right. Whatever that <laughs> means. Kind of like they, that is the, by the way, creepiest description ever. Like if he would have said she looks like a Kardashian. Great. Right, right. But she looks like a Kardashian in the gym. Just right. takes it to a very disturbing yeah. level to me. I'm just like, yeah. what's with the extra description? But it's dude? also just like, that's not even like your possible girl. Now you're texting your yeah, buddy yeah. about like so now he's scoping even yeah his friends girl you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so like he's definitely on the prowl definitely not a stand-up dude um Ugh. so when he's with his mom what was your energy on the mom thing because i i i had an energy and i, I have a, a thought on it i had an energy too okay and my energy was like mom was like here my baby boy goes again mm, typical yeah i was getting a this has happened so many times energy like mom immediately you know back like hit him back in a gentle way where she's like well you're lucky it wasn't me that, that you did that line. too i Be love like, that i, I love that she you. called him out mm -hmm. like she was like hey i i you're lucky it wasn't me yep. because i would have been waiting on that couch up for you and be grilling you afterwards and you know the fact that she waited like she was complimenting laura yeah and saying it would have been hard or she would have been more intense about it um but then as the conversation continued, it was like a she was checking him, but then was also kind of like, yeah, well, there's at least me, you and the dog, the dog. And yeah. we've got each other. I, that was the vibe I was getting where it's like she's she absolutely adores her son and she knows her son does this shit all the time. And she'll always have open arms when he comes running back home. But she'll also be like, well, there you go again. I was yeah. hoping maybe I'd have a daughter-in-law this time. Yeah, that's exactly. Especially if, again, the alleged, you know, he was engaged before. Right. Right before the show. Exactly. The drama of it all is that, you know, I think the family of his ex fiance was posting photos. And I think they were. I'm sorry if I'm messing this up, but I think they were alluding to the fact that he might have. He either ended the relationship right before sh the show started or maybe he even auditioned while he was still engaged to this right. person. And then he went online and he was like, no, no, we broke up. I was reached out to by Love is Blind, blah, 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 blah. Right. Like that's, you know, again, we'll find out more, I'm sure, at the reunion. I'm always but. curious by people that are like this because I'm always like, why do you need to be in a serious relationship? Like, yeah, why, why can't, can't you, you just, just be right? like if you if you want to be like a player or like hook yeah. up with a bunch of people like why do you need to be getting engaged twice and like breaking people's hearts and like know. you know what i mean it's such a weird thing to me like I'm, i never understand the like clearly you're kind of a player but then like at the same time you're straight up just like getting engaged but to you're, people. Yeah, you're like a fiance player yeah, it's like weird it's like <laughs> the like, worst type ever because you're like destroying <laughs> lives along the way i agree by the way mom she she she, the same she energy you got. completely reeked of like I love my son but he's not the best guy. Yes. Like I know he's lying to me about this because when because you know Jeremy said oh yeah I told her everything and I confessed everything right away it's like no you didn't she oh, you're busted right. you he on did everything say that. and she's yeah, like yeah, oh yeah. okay like she just knows he's done this yeah and I kind of felt bad for her like I had this like what would you do if you if you knew your son or your daughter or whoever was like kind of a liar kind of manipulative. And you're kind of sitting there. You're just like, eh, well, like, what do you, you can't I change know. them. You're kind of like, All I, right, really I love really, you. Like you love them through it. But at sure. the same time, you're kind of just disappointed in like how shitty it no, is. No, I you really, know? really respected her energy. She kind of just was like, yeah, well, you know, if you would have done that to me, I would have whooped you. But it is what it is. Yeah. You know, uh, hope the next one's okay. You kind of had that like hopeless energy. I was like, I know, oh, I felt I know. bad. But I really respect, I mean, she, the f I, I respected the fact that she called him out. Mm -hmm. And then I guess, you know, when you, you love your kid through everything, 
I mean, and she was even the one, it made me feel sad. She was the one when, remember when they, um, when uh, they showed up to Jeremy's house, his mom yeah. had left a note for them. Yes. Which by the way, I did have a theory that like maybe he wasn't as clean and like he was like, mom, come over oh, and clean my house. Oh, that's a great And she cleaned concept. the house and left the note there. Because by the way, that's what I would do. If I got engaged oh, in yeah, the pods, like, or just like have second, a clean or something. The second I got home, the second I got home, I'd be like, mom, yeah. I need you to go over to my house. Make my house look incredible. I need you to clean, please. Because there's going to be cameras there and I need you to do mom, a, just an incredible job. I lied job. about everything. I have a dog named Charlie. It's a golden retriever. Go get one, rent a dog, bring it over to my house, put a little tag on it named Charlie. Mom, I told her that my favorite <laughs> color is red. So can you go get me a red couch, put it in the house? I said, I always have fresh flowers in the house. Mom, can you go like, like literally I have 47 lies. I wrote them all down. Can, here's my shopping list. Here's what I need to do. Can you go that make sure? That was my theory. Yeah, that was yeah. my theory. But I felt like that theory was squashed a little bit when later on in the episode <clears throat> um, or in episode 11, when he's talking with Laura and he's like, your bags are already packed that i'm like oh that's like that's a cleanliness that's, thing he's yeah, like yeah. he's like it's not that i'm like it's not no he's not emotionally no. tied because he doesn't give a shit he's not emotionally tied to like get her stuff no. out he's like your shit is bothering he's me he's like it doesn't i have it co color coordinated and you <laughs> so fucked up a whole closet so like two hours it was clean and you're in your fucking <laughs> you know toothbrush is sitting on my thing i you normally have them stacked in a holder exactly. you know what i mean that's when i was like okay yeah he yeah. genuinely is like wildly clean <laughs> speaking of that comment Okay, yes. Yeah. So then the next time we see Jeremy and Laura is when they have the full yeah. Love is Blind cast yes. lake party that we've all been waiting for. Yes. And uh, Jeremy and Laura see each other for the first time and we see Laura and Laura's like, I'm done. Yeah. Like she's fully done. She's not done. She is fuming. She's fuming. It's like the flames are out. She's not like I've moved on. It's like I am scorched earth piss. A thousand percent. And she's like, we haven't spoken in about four days. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone else is like, where's your partner? It's like, well, we haven't spoken in four days. And you know, I have a lawsuit out against him type energy. Yeah. Like that and this sounds that. like a new experience for her. Like, So this whole process, this is probably very new for her to get broken up with a, or to be like cheated on or whatever with a guy that she's not even that into. Like yeah, this she is probably definitely, like an ego hit. Yeah, on a she big definitely level. gives me the energy of like she breaks up. Exactly. With someone. Exactly. Um, I, you know, I haven't been a Laura fan through this yeah. process and I've made that clear because of, you know, what happened in, in the Dominican Republic and everything. But like, I didn't hate her reaction to this at all. I felt like oh, yeah, I'd be absolutely it. fuming too. And I felt like if anything, she was tr fully trying to avoid him. Yeah. And then when people were like, oh, sh like when Jess at one point was like, should I go tell him like it is? She's like, no, he's not even worth right. your breath. Right. right. Like she was a little bit like, I'm not even gonna, like Laura gives me the energy where when he would then, her and him were then having a conversation later where he was like, I tried to, you know, send you flowers and whatever. Yeah. And you then sent me back that you didn't want any. Yeah. She's the vibe where she's like, we're done and we're done. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear your excuses. I'm never going to send you an angry email. Right. Or a emotional text. Right. You're just done. Our lives, like we're fully, it's we're been done. fully cut off. Yeah. So they're, they, they sit down. Yes. And this is right, by the way, before uh, or after Jeremy's come in. Yeah. And is like coming in like big dog like what's up boys yeah, yeah he's got that thing God. too like he like oh, er, like God, later on in the episode body. he like threw the football at like a crowd of people <laughs> all the food and you hear like push, push, and everyone's like jesus like that's that guy. he's got that energy where it's just like no no awareness no awareness of like how his energy affects a space like you just nailed someone with the football and you just are like yeah hey bro can you get that for me <laughs> yeah exactly he's the type of guy who when you are Ugh. dating him you get in the pool with him and your hair and makeup are and gorge and he just it. dunks yeah. you and you're like what the fuck or he takes like a water gun and blasts you in the face when you're in high school when you've got your like new mascara exactly. on and you're like are or he you throws joking? you in the pool to yeah. be funny you know what i mean and now you're like in a dress and you're like out and you're like have to figure out what to do and he's just like dude chill but he came in with that energy yeah. big dog energy and he's like, basically I'm not gonna let her affect me energy he basically said this he goes yeah was i out sure but i had to have this conversation with sarah ann and i'll just tell you what the way that laura responded told me it's all i needed to know right, didn't want right. to be with you anyway right classic he, and he kept saying like can i just get some grace, grace and you're like yeah. you mean 
lying to someone and going and meeting up with someone after being together for a week <laughs> yeah also like you we know that something happened even though you like you can't be proven and then well, you got busted on multiple didn't, lies he blatantly yeah. lied numerous Blat- times. blatantly lied went out all night met with the person that he was like like you said it was just complete betrayal and you know but it's the classic it's it's you went through my phone is the problem. You don't trust me is the problem. Even though you caught me cheating, you going through my phone wow, is the that's problem. A fantastic example. Which is just, you know, it's gaslighting like, at its finest. It's, yeah. I mean, I hate to use that word just because it's like, I know, you know, I know, I know. I, I, but it's like, no, but I'm saying when, when you go through someone's like phone and then you're cheating, that's it. like gaslighting. You know what I mean? And so it's the whole just like, listen, I know I messed up. But I don't want to be with you because you don't trust me. And that's a problem. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, what? So he just did the classic defense mechanism there. And it's like. And by the way, I was dying. Jimmy was like, don't sit next to me. Don't sit next to me. Yeah. Like, dude, Jimmy I was don't like, want don't bring me in heat. on this. I think Jimmy really cares. And we'll talk about it, about how he comes off on camera. Big time. Which big time. I don't think that that's a bad uh-uh. idea. You know, whatever my opinion might be of Jimmy, I think it's, yeah, it's not a bad idea to care about to how aware. you come off on camera. And Jimmy was like, don't, 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 I don't want to be associated. Chelsea's going to hate this. Laura's going to hate this. Also, I don't want any clearly, association Also, clearly, Jeremy and Jimmy were friends. They were talking. If they were chit-chatting about Jess and sending photos back also, and forth. Also, Jimmy's the whole, Je- yeah, Jess, see, so like Chelsea doesn't want to see them. Maybe free, free, yeah. Jimmy was there that night when they went out. Sure. Maybe that was the night, you know, that. Uh, Chelsea was like you were gone I sure. mean who knows uh, we don't who know knows? so it's like they, there's like please don't associate me with this right and so but one thing I did love was how petty that uh, was how petty Laura was and she texted him isn't it interesting to know that you're no longer my fiance it's, it says just Jeremy like that was some high school shit I loved it <laughs> it was high- so funny and then he used that as like a see another reason why we can't be together because you're so crazy you know it was very like heated, you know, very whatever. He was very stone cold. He was trying to, you know, he was doing the whole like, I don't I feel I'm not even affected by you. And she's right. doing and the she, whole. And she, by like, the way, calls him a con artist. Yeah. She's like, you've been lying from the right. get, which again, I'm very interested to see. She didn't know that yeah. he had just. Well, no, no. He said, I guess in his in his uh, Instagram video where he's talking about being engaged before. He's like, everybody knew. I had told everybody. Yeah. I'm very excited for this reunion to find out if he really did say that yeah and if people really did know because it was interesting to me that she called him a con artist and yeah. we end up finding out later that he was engaged and the family of the ex-fiance is like this might have been a crossover with auditioning i mean yeah. so we'll see how much you know who knows who knows i mean i think that at the end of the day he was in the wrong entirely Obviously. right Obviously, <laughs> the one thing he is good at is keeping his cool he's cold and calculated so that's always a classic thing you got to be careful if you're dealing with someone that like makes you feel nuts. Yeah. It's like the more that you react, the more you're going to look like the one, the more that they can use it against right. you. So in that moment, it was like one of those things that like, if you didn't know what had happened, you'd be like, wow, this Laura character is kind of like going off on. Him. Right. And he's you didn't know that you know he'd I mean? been lying. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, Which is always nerve wracking with the edit because you're like, oh, are exactly. they going to make me? You, know, you have to be so careful. You have to be careful. So, as much as you want to. And I would have absolutely yeah. gone off. But she went off and it basically was like, we're done. We're done for forever. Yeah, we're done for forever. I'm going to no pack. Chances. I'm going to get my stuff. And he's like, don't he's worry. It's already on the. As it's already ice. in the Uber on the way to your house right now. He is. He cold. is cold as He's ice. Cold. Straight energy. Um, okay. Let's then talk about Sarah Ann chatting with AD and then him yes. and Sarah Ann. Yes. Um, but first we have to take one more quick pause. Mm-hmm. Um, Family, support for today's episode comes from One Skin. Listen, after watching this season, I feel like I literally aged from being so stressed out. (laughs) I mean, I'll be real. It wreaked havoc on my mind, my heart, and on my skin. Luckily, I have my skin superhero around to help me, which is obviously One Skin. You all know we've been using One Skin for... I mean, over a year now, yeah. both of us, and it's been a game changer for us, and I'll use it forever now. I use One Skin on my face, my eyes, my whole body. It's the best. One Skin's products are powered by their scientifically proven peptide called OS1, okay? This peptide reduces the accumulation of damaged aging cells, the cells that make your skin less resilient and more prone to lines and wrinkles. Instead of masking those issues, One Skin addresses them at the cellular level, boosting your skin's natural barrier to lock in moisture and help protect against the elements. They combine tissue engineering, data analysis, and cutting edge longevity science to create the world's most effective product to target skin aging. Uh, One Skin believes the purpose of skincare is not just to improve how we look, but to optimize our skin biology 
so that it is more resilient to the aging mm -hmm. process. They create next level skincare truly. Uh, like Jess, I've been using it over a year now and I see a significant difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One Skin has a full line of face and body products, including OSO1 Shield, an SPF that prevents UV induced aging and repairs cellular aging all at once. We all know how important that daily SPF is. Oh my gosh. And One Skin's Shield is my favorite. It's doing all that at once. I just love all of their products so much. I love the way that they feel on my skin and also how easy they are to use. Just cleanse, pat your skin dry and apply twice daily. It's the best. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code MOMDAD at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code MOMDAD. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Help your skin stay younger and healthier for longer with One Skin. Again, that's 15% off oneskin.co with code MOMDAD. Okay, so then we have the conversation with um, AD and Sarah Ann because yeah. Sarah Ann <laughs> shows up to this lakeside party. Yeah. And shout out to AD, who will get to it, mm -hmm. but is the best person on this show. Well, I mean, I love Amy too, but like a AD's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, everything about I, her. I mean, I hate to say this, but I feel like unless Laura was like my best friend. I kind of would have avoided it. I would have been like, uh, just kind of like, you know, this is all your guys' issue. Like, cause I don't want to have, I don't want to be a part of the fallout. You well, know what I mean? Apparently I, just, I, I read that they were all really close. Okay. And so I think AD was like, I was just like, I so respected that like AD just sat her down and was like, what, what's going on? Dude? Well, she's really good at like doing that without looking like you're someone who like is like trying to get involved in the drama because a lot of people do that and then they look like they're just trying to kind of know the tea and kind of get yeah. involved with it all so that they can report back versus ad was seriously just kind of like i liked you like what the i think what AD, the thing know? about ad is because i think it's pure i think yeah. ad genuinely is like girl like what what like I want to help you out. Yeah. Speak your truth right now. Yes. You're on camera. Like, why are you doing this? Like, she's just going to, I think, I, I feel like it yeah. was just such a, it was a move to be like, hey, I'm going to help you out right now by like you explaining why you did what you did when you did it. Yeah. Like, but then I'm going to let you know when it's, it's not cool. Yeah. And then I loved when she kind of tried to lie about the text a little bit. And then she's like, I read the text. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Sarah uh, like, <laughs> so we, like, maybe Sarah and Jeremy are kind of good for each other in that way, where they're both kind of deceptive. They're both do, they both do shit out of like code, which is like, you know, when you don't have each other's backs and you're just like coming right for them. Like there is this kind of like, if you maybe, they speak the same language. Yeah, we'll see <laughs> if they're like, still together at the I reunion. But like when, yeah, and when AD was just like, hey, I mean, she's like, Sarah Ann, it's kind of crazy. Right. Like, can you, I'm having a hard time. Like, you're actually like, justifying It's kind of crazy, Sarah Ann. Like, you can't just, you, you, you DM somebody and she was like, I thanked him for my time. And she's like, no, no, no. You also like included the fact that you were like, hey, if, if you guys break up, I'm here. Right. Or not like, even that, just can't. like if you're having second thoughts at all, like call me, you know? Yeah, I'm like, that's a wild thing to message somebody. Like, you know, come on now. Again, I liked how Laura, I appreciated too, in that sense, how Laura was like, do I trust her? No. But this is Jeremy's issue. Jeremy was the one who committed right. to me. Right, of course. You know? Of course. So I appreciated that in a girl's way that Laura wasn't like, there she is. Yeah, it that's was like, true. that's on Jeremy. I, I really do appreciate that about yeah, Laura. Yeah. You know, that she didn't make it just focus on Sarah Ann. And it was like, it's not about Sarah Ann, you know, in this situation, it's yeah. about Jeremy. Yeah. But Sarah Ann was being shady, shady, shady when she was just like, I swear nothing happened. Right. But then we do get the tea from Sarah Ann that it's like, hey, Jeremy, confirmation said, hey, hello, I'm ending. Uh -huh. I'm trying to end things uh -huh. with Laura. And I made a mistake and I essentially want to be with you. And she and she tried to justify by being like, well, if his if his if he could sway that easy, then were they ever actually in love? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? God. It was like, that's not a justification for your actions. Like just because someone's unfaithful doesn't mean that like, like you're don't justified. Test it. You yeah, shouldn't yeah, yeah, just yeah. test the waters yeah, yeah, yeah. to see like, you know, how the relationship exactly. is rolling. Um, but she storms off right. and Jeremy follows her out. And that that scene absolutely was sending me because, you know, she's just like 
I have never, I will not apologize yeah. for my actions. And he's like, you shouldn't. I won't apologize yeah. <laughs> for my was, actions. He was like, I really don't want to talk about this. Can we go jet skiing? <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. You're the best. Yeah, you shouldn't. Oh, that's horrible. I'm so sorry you feel that way. Like that. That's what he, he was just. The energy was so two villains, just like villain They're out. in prison being like, why is there a law about this anyway? <laughs> you know, 100% you know they're I mean? like, like, I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You're right. We both didn't do anything. Fuck everybody else. Yeah, like, yeah, let's like, hop on jet hmm, skis together. Yeah. <laughs> Like they, those two, I'm telling you, it gives me that Tom Sandoval energy. Like they had that moment where she was like wanting it to know, by the way, for the camera that she was like, if anyone got hurt, by the way, who's the villain? I'm not the one who ended things with me. She kind of threw that yeah. out in his direction. And he's like, totally. Wait, what? He's like, yeah, wait, huh? <laughs> but I will say the difference is that he's very comfortable in this space. She did not seem as comfortable. She was much more rattled by the fact okay that like the girls the are villain. turning against her. Yeah. She feels isolated. He was a lot more like. Yeah, I'm kind of used to this. Maybe. Yeah. Like his energy was like, I've been here. Yeah. Her energy was like, I maybe I'm not as skilled in this art as you are. But then when they wrap it, she's just like, she's upset. And he's like, yeah, let's just like, what are we going to do next? We're going to go we, buy a castle and start our own kingdom. You know, no, that it was energy just, it was, it was just so like Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. Like they thought when they hopped on those jets, that it, they were wild. They were like Bond Insane. villains. They were like, I'm in the new James Bond movie and I'm zipping away on my helicopter. But reality is, is like, you're just doing donuts 40 <laughs> feet from everyone else who's sitting on the beach eating. It's not like it's not like they're like in the ocean and they go, they hop in their like, you know, their yacht and then like sail to like Monaco. They're literally hopping on a jet ski and just doing donuts 50 feet from the people on the beach. So it's just like, and they got to come back in and walk back <laughs> through the party. Like it's not, you didn't go anywhere. It's like he did a, it's like, should we go on a run? And then they like jogged and then came back. That was basically what they did. Oh my God. So that's how they wrapped. Yeah. And uh, we'll that? see. I can't wait for the reunion. Don't know yeah. if they're still together. Not sure what. But either way, just a, just a, a curated Laura Jeremy moment is do and i love that oh yeah it is due it and, well is you due. know what we need is a curated laura sarah moment yeah but i really th I, I do think that laura won't go hard in on sarah now really? sarah ann might come. Well, either way i, I could think see sarah ann getting like there. getting like feisty about it yeah but i feel like laura's focus is going to be on on jeremy yeah that's my energy because she really didn't say anything to her during the party i'm shocked yeah i'm shocked yeah all right okay next Next, we have Jimmy and oh, Chelsea. God. And family, I have to tell you, I don't think we have ever on our screens witnessed oh. a couple like Jimmy and Chelsea. It was it was like I, I couldn't wait for the next episode because I was like on pins and needles always. But I just could barely bear to watch it. Yeah. Jeremy. Laura just felt like a classic, like shitty relationship that went bad on yeah, television. Bad dude, yeah. Clay, AD, got their issues watching it, though. Oh, there's some emotions. There's some ups and downs. Johnny, Amy, you're like, okay, these two? <laughs> it was like it's nausea the whole time. Not, not Chaos I can handle. I had the ick for both of them on a level that was so high that like I just I was like, oh, why am I feeling sick right now? Like I'm like I'm eating and I'm losing my appetite as I'm watching them. Like the way that it just happened and and how unhealthy and how <laughs> no, I hate to say this, but just like full of shit they always were. Like my number one issue is I was always it was all just we're doing so well yeah, right no, now. I couldn't it's like, handle you it. You guys have fought every <laughs> single night you've been together. Every night. You guys have had, you've been together for three weeks and you've had more fights than most couples have in two years. I mean, you guys fight about everything. And then you say the next morning, our communication is incredible and we've never been better. I mean, what a, I mean, are you guys that insane? Is that how you talk about in your life? Like, he's like, you get a car accident and the next day you're like, this car has never been more perfect. And you're just like, is this some, like a defense mechanism to like, it had, I mean, it obviously is. it is, but it it's is. like, but it's so and by the way, it was insane. so, it was so wild to me that see like that, that was the one forbidden thing for Jimmy. Like Jimmy was like, you know, I'll talk about my thoughts and feelings on Jimmy, but Jimmy was, I feel like in a lot of ways, handling a lot of the arguments well from a visual perspective. He wasn't letting it spiral like right. she was. But what was like the thing that really like did one thing that clipped him was when they were at the lakeside party and all of a sudden Chelsea was like, 
Johnny and Amy are the number one like, couple. And then he brought it up later at the theme park when everything no, no, was no, ending. No, no, no. He, he, he took <laughs> like three times about that comment. Then that was the thing. It's like you, you did the unforgivable sin for Jimmy, which is not say that you two are ultimately the best couple yeah. and that you're perfect. It's like, obviously you're not the best. <laughs> obviously your guys' relationship I mean, you guys are, isn't doing You guys are best. living in a, in a, in a relationship dumpster fire. And then you're sitting there like insecure about the relationship. It's like, are you out of like your concern that she's making jokes about it? It's like, how could you not make it? You have to make a joke. Let some of the air out of the balloon or the tire or whatever. It's like now before we dive officially into like the ins and outs, I want to say this overall. A lot of people I think are really like loving on Jimmy. They're a really? fan of Jimmy, yes. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that, like, yeah, look that, at the other guys this season. Like, can you yeah. believe we had Jeremy doing the Jeremy thing? And then we have Matthew and then Kenneth uh, cut sure, it off sure. wild. And then, you okay. know, then the, yeah, the, the, like the AD clay matters, wedding. I guess. It's just like, oh my gosh. And all these people have all these thoughts and yeah. feelings. And so it's like, oh, well, Jimmy, you know, he's a, at he's least a broke nice it off guy. Before oh, well, and then also, too, again, during these unhinged arguments, yeah. he is emotionally seeming to handle it yes. very well. He I, gotta, I gotta give him he that. He definitely seems more emotionally mature in regards to like, he's not outlandishly saying tons of things. He's not constant. Like, they're, they're, like I will say that in the arguments, yes, he, he definitely handled it more maturely across the board. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. He also like, even like talking about like you're overstepping boundaries. Like I, I think, so I, I want to say that I do want to say that, but I think the people really are enjoying Jimmy much more than they're enjoying Chelsea. Right. So if there's okay, like, so Chelsea's and, getting, yes, dragged. I think Got so. Okay. I think so. And I want to say this. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, everyone. I think that both of them are completely unhinged mm. in different ways. And I shouldn't say he's unhinged, but I think he's, he never wanted to be with her. And I think he was convincing himself the entire time that he wanted to be with her and he didn't want to appear like a bad guy. Yeah. So he tried and went through the motions, but she felt it in her heart the whole time. And that's what ultimately made her spiral the way it did. I think the editing of the show tried to make her seem like the bananas one. Mm. I think they tried to make, sure. I think they favored him in the editing mm. personally um, because they think there were a lot of pieces that weren't included. Um, Jess was on the Vial files and I'm sorry, I need to watch the, the whole thing to like gather all the info, but from like little clips that I was seeing, what I gathered was that she was letting the audience know a little bit that like, Hey, there's a lot that you didn't see uh, sure. and I get why Chelsea was spiraling the way she was. Like like a good example of that would be the you go out with your friends fight where yes. you're going like, okay, now is From she what I saw, is she this unhinged where he goes out for an hour and a half dinner <laughs> and once like, and she's like, never no, she's like, I never want to be with anyone who's ever been to a dinner ever. You know, and you're kind of like, you're... You're like, you can't have friends. You're like, you're insane, right? But like, but it's giving like, oh, um, he's probably gone out a lot more than... Like, they cut out the part where he's gone out five so nights or from, something. From what I recall, it seemed like Jess alluded to the fact that he was like gone a, a lot, lot. Right, right. And in the pods, Jimmy made it very <laughs> clear to everyone because she said Jimmy was like the one that everyone was obsessed with. And Jimmy made it very clear he doesn't go out. Yeah. And I think what we didn't see is that he was going out a lot. Right. And so and they so cut from the one Chelsea's and just made it about the one dinner. Let's be real. If you can sense that this person doesn't fully want to be with you and then you get home and you've been home for a few days and the person is always on their phone or out constantly, you're like, oh, they don't really like me that much. Chelsea. And also when I want to say this, sorry, I know that we're then going to wind back in. But something that I do think that's important to remember, too, is that when everyone was like, she's absolutely Delulu with mm -hmm. the fact that she's like, you can't ever go. Which yeah. if if that in and of itself was the case. Yeah. True. And I think the way that she handled yeah. it was bananas. If it's actually that, that's wild. It's because it's like you can't your partner can't have a life of their own and friends of their right. own and go out. That is not healthy. OK, but what I can't get past is I feel like everyone's forgetting is that the one image that Chelsea has of Jimmy is that the only time she's ever quote unquote been out with him at night was when they went to the party oh, yeah. 
on at the DR and Jimmy got hammered and said that AD was stacked yeah. and flirted with her for like 30 minutes and then went and kind of was flirting with everybody else. That's what Chelsea knows of Jimmy. And that was after knowing him in person for 24 hours. Yes. So from her perspective, I, I'm like, okay, if that's what you know, then every time he goes out and you don't know who he's with yeah. and he's drinking, I'm like, well, drunk Jimmy says some wild shit right. and is flirting it up. So I'm on edge. Mm-hmm. So I just want to make that note. I yeah. still think the whole thing was absolutely nuts. But I I, I do think that's yeah. important to remember. I, I mean, here's the thing. Like, Sorry, I'm lecturing. I feel passionate no, about it. No, no, I love it. I love it. I mean, we're, we're talking about him. I think that Chelsea has a lot of good points. She is just olympic level bad at talking about him oh yeah like she is give her the gold medal of how to sabotage yourself oh my gosh and and make your point look crazy so it's like if i just put on paper and i go okay switch i'm in the pods with this girl and i see her in real life and we start hanging out and all of a sudden the first night we hang out she's complimenting these guys on their bodies you know flirting with all the guys and i'm going wow okay then we get home and she's like out consistently and her best friend has been a hookup situation yeah and and she's texting with him all day and like talking to him all day on paper you're like yeah those are issues that could make me very jealous and kind of make me in my this person exactly make me feel really in my head about this thing so like when you actually look at what she talks about sometimes and you're like yeah you won't have sex with me you won't kiss me you won't touch me like something's up right those are all valid issues and then she just happens to always say it in a way that makes her look that she has no validity. She, She'll she says because it we're and, also coming from perspective too of she experienced that f- those first 24, 48 hours that we all saw after they saw each other for the first and he's time. Like, where you she got could big tell. teeth, you know. So like <laughs> she's like if I was dealing with that that my best feature was my big teeth square and that teeth. like I'm in my big square teeth and that like you know what I'm saying? So if this person has never even given me like a real compliment, won't get near me, and then all these things, I would be in my head too. It's yeah. just like Olympic level bad at like delivering them to make you look crazy. And so that's my big thing is like the communication, because they're they're apparently the best communicators of all time. The best. The communication's so bad yeah. that like it makes everyone look worse or better. Yeah, no, no, that's no, you're a hundred percent right. Because and even there were moments too where it's like where it's just not okay, where Chelsea when she has like that full blown. Okay. So they meet his family. Yeah. Everything goes really yeah, well. His parents are very, very sweet. And, and you know, his mom's like, I can see that he's over the moon and da, da, right. da, da, da. And you're like, Oh, okay. Like I guess. And like I've said, I do think that he, there are parts to Chelsea, yeah. but I still think that he's not ever, hasn't ever been fully in. Oh, not at all. So, um, so, you know, but, but overall it goes really, really well. And they get home and, uh, you know, they're like, that was the best day we ever had. It was amazing. And she's like, yeah, well, last night I was upset at you into this morning. Yeah. And, you know, but now you, I'm all happy. And then that argument gets brought up. <laughs> Which happens every time. They go, this morning I really hated you, but we were doing so good but now. now. And then amazing. four seconds later they start fighting. <laughs> Always. It's literally. <laughs> it's blueprint. It's every day. They fight every day. <laughs> it's every day. Every night they go to bed like hating each other and they wake up and they're like, well, you want some pancakes? But then she's like, hey, you know, you went out last night and, you know, you didn't even ask me. And so, right. okay, again, this is like the problem with communication. The way she's communicating is absolutely treacherously terrible. It's just so And not it's good. just like putting all this on him instead of being like, because... Because then again, when you look at it, you're like, okay, I understand if she's feeling like he's been going out and he never invites her out. And if all the other women from the pod are getting invited out by their person, but he goes out with his friends and doesn't invite her out. And it's like, why don't you want me to meet more of your friends? Right. Right. So instead of saying, you know what, I'll be honest with you, like, I would love to meet your friends. Like, you know, even if you feel like you're waking me up, like if you want space to hang out with your friends, I totally get it. But I also, at some point, I would love to meet your friends. Mm. It's like you are who knows what you're doing. And you're, you know, you're like, oh, my God. It's just pure emotion instead of like actually looking for an answer. It's just like, I want you to feel how shitty I feel. Right. That's all it is. And then she brings up, you know, who was there. And then she brings up his friend. One of the women that we met. And she's like, you fucked her. Yeah, her wild okay and right. jimmy he's pale 
And he's like, I told you that off, off camera, camera, like intentionally not to say anything. And then right. she's doing this whole, I know you're trying to protect your reputation, but I have to say it now. This is one of those ones where it was like, this was told you in confidence. That's not, not cool. cool for you not to just cool, say that, especially man. because it then involves this other yeah. woman who I do believe he was trying to protect. Right. Yes. But then I under but then there's the also the part of like understanding, okay, what else are we not seeing in this? How and when was this brought up? Was it before meeting this person? Was it after meeting this person? These are the context things that we don't necessarily know. And then there's also this feeling of like she's feeling like she's losing her mind. Or you're like, why, why is it just not quite there? Why does mm. he not want to be with me? Why does he not want to have sex with me? Why is he saying we're amazing? And then, you know, and I'm joining in, but like what, there's a thing missing. And then I hear that he, he's always on his phone. He clearly doesn't like to be around me that sure. much. And then I find out that there's this friend of his who he has had sex with. And, you know, he says it's once, but who knows if it's, you know, what whatever. And then you're starting to be like, I want the audience to know that like, I'm not just jealous about him going out with girlfriends of his. I'm jealous because they've had sex before. Yeah. But it wasn't okay for her to share. That's like a private conversation. But it was almost like she was doing that to be mm -hmm. like, I need the audience to know that I'm, that it's because they've had sex before. Yeah. But then he's like, yeah, but you know, you talk to your ex-boyfriend, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah. But then she starts pulling this whole thing about like, Mackenzie saw you and I know Jess was there. I know you were with her. And yeah. then that was, I think, a full blown lie. Mm -hmm. That was a full blown. Or it was he like said, a, she, she was. He said, you're trying to catch me. Yeah, right now. He, she was like throwing it out to see if he would go. Yeah, I, know, I, I knew it. You know, that kind of thing. <sighs> you know, my whole thing was just like. He should have broken up with her way earlier on. <laughs> And he made her he made her lose it because it's like if you're always like you said, if you're always questioning what's what's wrong and why am I yeah. crazy? Am I thinking my am I, am I, he's saying there's no issue, but there clearly is. Well, it's like you see her like crumble. You see her just slowly like, deteriorating. 100 percent. Um, But. The fight. And, and he even called it out, too, because he, he was much better at handling like the dynamic of the fight because he's also like you're being drunk you know what i mean like, and then right. and then and then he's like i'm not willing to change you know because she calls out like you need to back off with these friends and he well, goes, he goes I'm you, not. he's like you've never even asked me ask yeah. me ask me and then she asked him and he goes i'm not willing yeah, <laughs> yeah, was right. like, what are so you then doing? he stood his ground because she thought what was going on was that she thought she could get be him. emotional enough yeah to get him to go, oh, I'm so sorry, I'll change. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I'm not going to change. And that's when she goes, well, then maybe we shouldn't be together. And he goes, maybe we shouldn't. And then she goes, oh, never mind. I love you. No, it's just a fight. It's just a silly fight. You know, yeah. that's the stuff where it's like, and that's uh -oh. the stuff that's like, I mean, that's, I'm sorry, but that's like, that's that toxic shit that's where the you're toxic like, shit. she, you were, you're you manipulating were him. calling him his ass out, which in, again, like, I understand being like very uncomfortable in a situation where you're like, hey, I now found out yes. that you guys have hooked up and you're always on your phone and, I don't feel like I know you well enough to know. Like, Concerns are, are valid. Concerns are valid. You know, communication, important. But then for you to say all those things and then the next day when he says, I am i don't want to get married, for you to be like, what are you talking about? How come? We've worked right. on everything. We're perfect together and pull him back in. That's where he tried to get out. To, you know, he, I mean, he didn't, he, 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 he if you would have agreed they would have been done but he kind of was too weak to like cut it right you know and maybe it was a show thing where they're like don't cut it oh, until no, the my, end my hair tie broke oh. i have to get another one <laughs> sorry keep going but like if he, he should have cut it but like he also was probably on the fence or whatever whatever and you kind of knew he wanted to cut it yes so but instead of letting that happen you fearfully drew him back in with the i'm sorry and the you're right and all that kind of stuff Yes. And then and then when he's kind of like, we have a problem and she just goes, it was just a silly little fight. That was always kind of like the thing. She of just like, wrote it we off. Just, you know, there's ups and downs Everybody and struggles. Everybody has ups and downs and you're like, dude, no. <laughs> you're on a 24-7 struggle. And that was the thing with them. Sorry, I had to go get a new hair tie and I lost my train of thought, everyone. But, <laughs> but, if I, but what I was trying to say, I think, was that. When, when I talk about that, I think the editing swayed towards trying to make Chelsea look more bananas is I could have seen if they focused on trying to make Jimmy more of like the one that like for the audience to have a problem with. Yeah. 
I could see them making it be a whole thing of like, oh, he introduces her to the friends and all of a sudden gasp, we find out that they've yeah. slept together and it becomes like this big, you know, yeah. this whole big thing or really focusing on like, you know, him with calling AD stacked and all yeah. that stuff. And like, I, I felt like it was definitely the filming was more like, watch her absolutely lose yeah. her you know, or showing him again what what sounded to me like and i could be wrong but what sounded to me like jess alluding to the fact that he was out a lot more yeah. frequently yeah which by the way all these men sounded like they were like partying a ton as soon as they all got home it was like well, kenneth was out with the boys like jeremy was out they, and they were all like out drinking till late yeah, like it's because they're not into their girl yeah that's true <laughs> like let's be real Right? Yeah. They're not into their girl. Yeah. Look at Johnny. And the women can feel it. Yeah, that's There true. was no mention of Johnny being gone all the time. Yeah. And we he, love, Johnny by the way, we actually, love people going out and partying and living their own true no, lives. It's more like, you know what it is. Where you're it's avoidant. Like, you're avoidant. But you get be, home and you're like, I don't want to spend time with this person. Johnny actually said during the wedding time, or it was either the wedding or the, the, the suit picking or whatever, when he looked at his friends and goes, sorry guys, I have a new best friend. Oh yeah, that was sweet. Right? So like he's he actually with the opposite. He was making it clear like, "Hey boys, I love you, but like just so yeah. you know, I got a new best friend." The other guys are like, "Get me out of this <laughs> damn house away from her." That was the yeah. energy. You and know I what think, I mean? And that's and that's what Chelsea was feeling. She I mean, listen. Like we said, she knew. She knew. She knew. She knew. We and I feel like we all knew. Let's be real. And Jimmy's going to deny it. And like and I by the way, yeah. I believe that in every interview, in every um, and all in the reunion, I, I he will, and you know what? Maybe he's convinced himself, but sure. I believe with my heart, soul, and mind, I think we all know that he was never that into her, and he was trying to push himself because I don't think he's a bad guy. I think he's, but he's really focused, like you said, on trying to be like appear as the good guy instead of being like, okay, like what's actually going to be good for this person? Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, I think it's. I mean, I hate to say this, but I think it's as simple as this. He was in the pods. He was in between Jess. The Megan Fox thing sent him over the edge. He was kind of like, boom. I'm very into this physical thing. Uh, which one's hotter? Like that was his brain. His yeah. brain was like, okay, this one's saying she looks like Megan Fox. I think Megan Fox is hot. Yep. Okay, and let's then, go for it. And then, then he gets then, out and realizes it doesn't look like Megan Fox. Maybe isn't that into her looks wise. And then is like in his head the whole time and trying to figure it out. And then the Jess, and then he sees Jess on Instagram. He's more into her physically. Yep. It, it's it's once the, the, the like the, the you know worm was in his brain he couldn't yeah. get over it and and like then in the flip side too what, what was the reason that we think that chelsea ended up choosing uh jimmy when trevor was her number one it's because apparently everyone in the pod had the hots for yes. jimmy and then jimmy all of a sudden is like pulling away from her and it's like oh no oh my yep. gosh and she wanted that feeling and you see it then in their relationship here where it's this push and pull this toxic push and pull Very because insecure of insecurity yes yeah. boom 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 that's it now they then go to the lake party yeah. and the lake party is big for them because they're going to see Trevor and Jess mm -hmm. for the very first time. Um, you know, Jess walks in and uh, Jimmy is. There's a lot of looks, too. There's a lot of him and Jeremy giving looks at him and him going, oh, my, oh my God. God. Yeah, there's a lot of looks. Yes. And uh, and, you know, Jimmy, he ends up pulling Jess aside. Yeah. And he is like, hey, we have to have this conversation. Yeah. I'm not one to avoid talking to yeah. you. This is what we've <laughs> yeah. all been waiting for. We're like, oh, congrats. I'll avoid my own girl, but uh, I will not avoid you, was basically what he said. So I'll go said out every night to avoid being around my girl at any time, but I am not avoiding. So, okay, everybody. They sit down. Yeah. And they have this conversation. Now, I think a lot of people probably pulled away from this conversation. Very respectable. Mm. There weren't lines crossed. No. It's okay. But because I am trying to be hyper focused on <laughs> no, my I mean, Jimmy is... opinion, <laughs> let's be real. They sit down. The and what I had said before is I think, I think in the last episode I said I think this whole conversation with Jimmy and Jess it's going to be fully up to Jess. If Jess leads in a way where she's interested, he'll come a running. But if she's not, then he will be like. He, and I felt that pulsating off the screen in this conversation 100 percent. she started the conversation and he said he gave her that smirk and he goes so how have you been if she would have been like i'll be real with you, you i'm missing you and i'm yeah. a mess i think this conversation would have gone very differently but she said i've been good you know obviously ups and downs but i'm doing overall really well mm -hmm. and then she goes 
how have you been? And then she cuts him off and she's like, oh my God, did Jess meet or did a Chelsea meet your parents? I bet they adored her, didn't right. didn't they? She was being a total girl's girl. She was being a queen and we love to see it. Shout out to Jess where she was just like, I'm, I'm going to immediately set the tone of this conversation because later they do talk about their relationship yeah. and missing each other. Mm -hmm. But I'm setting the tone of this conversation, even though I'm hurt in this, to be like, obviously your parents loved her and let you know you know, and then she said, I really hope you treat her well. Like, I hope you treat her well. And then you saw Jimmy shift. And he's like, totally. I didn't, I don't even <laughs> like you, to be honest. He, like, that was his energy. It his energy became like, totally. And, you know, I'm here just to call. I'm on, I'm here on behalf of Chelsea to say I love her. And just so <laughs> you know, just so you know, the door is closed. That it's was his energy closed. of like, but he did try once to she prod, shut that down. But he did try to prod a couple yes, times 100%. because he said, and I'm sorry, but this would, if I was in a relationship, if I was engaged, this would probably be a conversation to me. Like, it would probably bother me a little bit if I was watching this back. Where then Jess, like, oh my God, so tell me. So so the family went well. He's like, yeah, it went great. You know, I've been opening up and sharing about myself. And she's like, oh, that's amazing. I know they'd loved her. And he's like, yeah, but the crazy thing is, it's like, we had a great day meeting the family and then turned into a crazy argument. Yeah. He initiated telling he her, her that, they, had an that argument. they were fighting. And I noticed him do that in the pods with both of the women where he, he'd leak a little bit of like the drama about the other person. And it was like, he did not need to initiate sharing. Now the difference is now, Sure, Chelsea was being playful with Trevor, yeah. but I did note the energy was different. that Trevor was prodding about if they were arguing or not. And then Chelsea said, we were arguing, but it was on me. I, I, and she made it about her. Well, Trevor was like, get, he, he was bordering on Sarah energy. Like, give me yeah. another chance. I'd love to see what happens if we had another chance. I'd love to see what happened if this, if, if there was, you know, the roles were reversed. Like he was really going for it. 100%. And she didn't allow it anything to kind of happen there. She's just yeah. like, well, you know, you are my type and I do think you're really awesome. But, you know, I chose and we're good. So I was when I was watching the Jimmy and Jess thing, I was like, I'm sorry. Everybody's going to walk away and say like it was respectful, beautiful, which it, it was handled well. But I will stand by the fact that I think that if it was if she had opened that door that he was yes. trying to make those little holes, I he agree. was like, we were arguing. I'll be real. If I was Chelsea watching that back and we were married right now, I'd be like that kind of that kind of hurt my feelings that you like initiated telling her that we were fighting right away and like when that she you were was my trying number one and you know all this stuff yeah yeah so i think he was trying to poke holes in it a little bit and he then was, he was really smart about it though like he was really really he knows delicate, how to be on camera delicate he really so he was just kind of like i'm gonna let well. you talk first and set the tone here i'm not going to be the one that comes out and goes to be honest with you i was so nervous seeing yeah. you like you know he, he would say stuff like you terrify me which is an interesting way it's not saying like i have a crush on you but it's yeah. saying like i do and by the way he know he really knows how to be on camera well and we know that because he knows to say don't share this on yeah. camera he said I'm that multiple tell you, times you know and i do believe he was trying to protect his friend but he also probably was mm -hmm. trying to protect himself in that situation i think he's aware too. i think he's also aware which is probably also making chelsea feel like crazy is like he probably on camera is a little different is different than he is off camera. That's very, that's a very good point. So I think he was trying to put, and even with the Jess thing, he then brought up like how they ended. Yeah. He was trying to, he was trying to vamp on the conversation. And then that opened her up more where she then started to get emotional and cry. But again, her initial energy going in there was just like, you know, Chelsea's amazing and you better treat her well. And so, you know, it ended in a respectable way, but I'll stand by the fact that I think that if the she would have, if was, she would have come open door, like Sarah Ann energy, I don't know what would have happened to everybody. I, I don't know what would have happened. Um, but then, yeah, back to uh, Chelsea and Trevor, Trevor, uh, and we'll get into this more during the reunion, I'm yeah. sure. And then I'll explain all the texts and whatever, but we have gotten released texts to show that Trevor was in a relationship right. When he went on the show and was texting his girlfriend being like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, we're not going to get engaged. I mean, like full scheme. It's always so, scary because he just seemed like the most genuine dude there. We were obsessed. Yeah. Like, we were so obsessed. sweet. And even in this conversation, if I wouldn't have known, I would have been like a little flustered. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, he's flirting. Yeah. He's trying to get in. But like, you know, but then also talking to Jimmy and oh, he really likes Chelsea. That's yeah. how I would have felt watching mm -hmm. it. He was like, the whole thing's a game. Oh, like, I, let's get the app and I want to remind you that I'm here. And he was, he, now knowing that he at this point was dating someone is mental. Mental. Like, cra like truly. Jeremy makes sense. You know what I mean? Is, Certain people make this sense. This is terrifying. Yeah. That's terrifying like, because oof. 
the way that he sat with Chelsea, mm-hmm. he was pushing everything. Like obviously yeah. she was giggly and a little bit like, yo, yeah, oh, it's nervous and you're definitely, you're my type. And, and you he's know, like, whatever. let's be real. You're super attractive. You're super attractive. He was pushing it. Mm-hmm. He was saying, Big I got to ask you again, if you would have said, if I would have asked you to marry me first, would right. things have been different? And she said, no. Right. And I think, she by the a, way, if the if the roles have been reversed and Jimmy was talking to Jess and a question like that would have been posed, he would have oh, been a little more wishy-washy. Yeah. You know, 100%. he literally said you were my number one. Yeah. He said, you're still my number one, which I don't Something like that. Which right. was confusing to me. That was me. just kind of like, like I think that was mark, a fish. Is that a weird that editing a fi- or was that a fish? Maybe, maybe it's a fish going, hey, I mean, oh, you know, like letting you know. But anyway, Chelsea and Trevor, definitely playful energy. Yeah, yeah. Like if I was watching it, I would feel a little jelly. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. If I was Jimmy or if I was someone but who I was, was in also love with like, Chelsea. I, I, but to Trevor me, it didn't bother me at all. It, because but Trevor was pushing it. But also, it. it was like, yo, they did. They almost got engaged. Yeah, for sure. And then they were never seen each other. I mean, it's like, that's, that's fair to have a flirty moment or to be like, hey, remember that conversation or have a, have that. Yeah. Um, I felt like it was way it was way more like oh we're friends energy yes. but Trevor was definitely trying to get info and get her to admit again which is wild to think about that he was in a relationship while he was doing it it's like now you're even trying to actively mess this up like the difference was left. Jimmy looked nervous she didn't no she seemed comfortable she seemed comfortable in the fact that like yeah you're cute and you know we could have and, had but something I but chose we don't Jimmy. Have yeah yeah where he was kind of like Jimmy was like could I pull this off that yes. was the energy I was yes. getting. And so anyway, so then at that moment, then that's when Chelsea makes the comment to Trevor, have you met our strongest couple? Which I, I, I didn't get the vibe from her that she was being flirty and ignoring Jimmy in that. No, no I, I was getting I that think she's she being was, joking around. And I think she was like, oh, it's like an awkward moment. And like Amy and Johnny come yeah. over. It's like, have you met our strongest couple? Like being sweet to Amy and John, Johnny, who, by the way, yeah. also clearly they were the ones who got engaged on the show first. Yeah. And they're cruising. And so there everyone, no issues they're the and, mom yeah. and dad couple. Like exactly. everyone's kind of like, yeah, everyone would have, I think in. would probably say that. Mm-hmm. But it's Bug and Jimmy. And Jimmy's like, that hurt my feelings. Yeah. But that's, that's when you know you've argued a lot. When a <laughs> tiny little dumb comment like that rattles you for the day. You know, you fought so much to where like, our strongest couple, what do you mean we're not strong? It's like, oh, clearly, we, like, you think we're strong? We fought every day. <laughs> you think we're the strongest couple? But it's like, no, the, the fact that you even said that. Yeah, that yeah, shows yeah. you when you're tired, when you fought, when you just got done getting shut down from Jess you know, you start drinking again, like you're pissed. You're on edge. A hundred percent. Well, she was like very, very supportive. I was like, baby, no, I, I didn't joking, mean, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, but oh, by the way, I, I want to side note this. Just a side note that involves, I think, the editing, by the way, again, with Jimmy and Chelsea. We didn't see Jimmy or we didn't see Chelsea, excuse me, freak out about Jimmy talking to Jess. We never saw that. And I think from everything we've seen of Chelsea, we, we would we hundred percent assume that Chelsea would freak out about Jimmy talking to yes. Jess. The fact that she didn't, and like, she what literally... You, what, like, even just a, what were you, what were you, what were you guys talking no, about she so literally, long? She literally said, how was your conversation with yeah. Jess? Oh, I'm so glad that you guys talked. I think that's a little bit of a window into that, like, she doesn't maybe necessarily always spiral, that there's maybe things that are happening behind the scenes with Jimmy that are... Not quite as unhinged as it looks kind of thing. Or, like, maybe, maybe she is, but, like, sh- Jimmy might be coaxing it on sure, sure. with some action sure. behind the scenes. That's all I want to say because I wanted to make note of that of like, hey, we all assumed that Chelsea would absolutely lose her shit with Jimmy and Jess talking, yeah. especially for a long time, but she didn't. But then after this lakeside yeah. situation, it seems to have only brought them closer together because mm-hmm. then we get the montage of them, you know, doing ice sculptures together. Right. And, you know, Jimmy probably was like, instead of rings, can we, can we sculpture out a statue? Maybe... Uh, Megan Fox looking over us at our wedding. Would you mean and Megan Fox instead of MGK together? I mean, I, 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 I mean, I don't know, just brainstorming. I mean, me and you. Um, yeah. I mean, but Megan, I mean, but they're having this moment. He, of course, tells her, I love doing this with you. Another thing where it's like, we're not talking. He brings it up about the dune buggies and then about, you know, the when, that's that's when he's like, I love being with you. I love being with you talking, when it's when we're doing grinding things. It's loud. Uh, I have a chainsaw in my hand. I'm going to be taking you to a theme park later where it's loud and we're going to be able to ride the whole time so we can't talk. An also, he said something real quick before we move on. Yeah. He said something amazing, which was my favorite thing about you is that how much you love me <laughs> during the ice sculpting. That's an, that's an all time compliment. That's an all-time non-compliment. My favorite thing about you is how much you like me. 
I mean, that's a listen, I mean, I under the right circumstances, but like romantic. in their circumstance, not good. But I will say at that he still, point, he, he still, he did I still have her, not been able to tell you I like you. He yet. did tell her that she has pretty eyes and she goes, oh my God, that's so nice. And she goes, see, <laughs> like she was like, see, you can compliment me. You should try that. Oh, but we're so strong in our communications. So strong. But then after the ice sculpture, is it after the ice sculpture? But they end up doing the fitting, yeah, right? The, fitting. the wedding dress is. fitting and the um the tux fitting, which by the way, nothing much happens with any of the couples during this, but the one other thing, than everyone just saying we're so good to go. We're so good to go. That was like the message right? of the fitting. And so in this moment, I'm just hearing Jimmy being like I mean, Nick Lachey even goes, dude, you sound like you could get married today. Send yeah. him off. And he's like, that's right, Ready everybody. Go, I baby. found my wife for the rest of my life. So you're like, oh, Jimmy's now locked in and they seem to be on a good yeah. path. Yes. Then we end up having a final date. Or they are go to an amusement park. Yes. Right? Um, they shut the whole amusement park down for them. Mm-hmm. Jimmy, it seems to be his most favorite place. He's like, you've never been there. This is my joy. Mm-hmm. I love this place. They shut the whole place down for us. This is my theory. I think Jimmy would knew he was going to break up with her, but he's like, let me use the Netflix budget and rent this whole theme park for myself for this one day. I, I literally <laughs> wrote, I think you're looking, you looked at my notes. Really? Because I literally, <laughs> watch it together? <laughs> I literally wrote down, this was all a ploy to go to this theme park with no lines. Because this whole thing is like, I always wanted to be a billionaire because like, you know, how like it's like Richie Rich. It's like the idea of like having a roller coaster in your backyard. <laughs> His whole thing was like, maybe I won't be a billionaire, but man, I'd love to just be able to go to a theme park with no lines one day. I always dreamed about it. And so this Wait, whole thing. Did you see thing, him on the rides? He, he, was, was, he was going like this. Kicking and ah! screaming. He was, he, was like, he was literally like giving like it rock and roll. It was the most and, happy like, we've and, ever seen Jimmy. And she was just like, ah! And he was just like, yeah, baby, let's go. And he was doing the classic like 30s guy thing, which is let's go. Like he literally, he was going like this and his legs were like this. And he was just going, ah! The whole time. Like, it was insane. Like, he didn't give a shit that she was there. It was just about his moment on the ride. So, I think that he knew he was going to break up with her, but they're like, yes. you, get a, you have a final you date. Have a date. What do you want to do? It's like Netflix budget. Do you guys know my favorite the theme CEO park of this lines. theme park? Because I'd love. And they're going, it's like 5 a.m. or like, you know what I mean? It's like. It's because hilarious. literally, Evan, it's they're blissed out the whole right. day. They're laughing, they're smiling, they're playing the carnival games. He's living, they're yeah. having the best time. And then they get to that dinner, and he's like, "Wow, best day of my best life." Of my and life. she's like, "Oh my god, same." She's like, "It's the best we've ever and he ever even been." Said like, "I have no doubts. I'm ready to go all the way." <laughs> yeah, but I've never really asked you, "How are you?" And then she's like, "I'm ready to go." And then you're like, "Wow, great." And he's just like. I'm not at all. It was like, what? By you the way, the past they got week, me. all you've been saying, <laughs> they got me more <laughs> they than got me. everyone else. They got me. When they left us on episode 11, when they left us on episode 11 on the cliffhanger, when he said, hey, Chelsea, how do you feel? Are we going to do this? Yes. We haven't talked about this. Are we going to officially get married? I was like, duh. He she's, put it in her. But I was like, I was like, they left us on a cliffhanger and she's going to say, of course. And they're just trying to mess with us. So and the, so she yeah. said, says, of course. And then he says, I won't go to the they altar. They didn't get me. <laughs> they didn't get me when it came to convincing me that she, he liked her. Right. But no. what I did think was going to happen is they were going to get married. And yeah. that he was going to like, in that he didn't like her very much. And then they were going to get divorced later. You know what I mean? Like my yeah, thing was like, seven years later, my thing yeah. was like, he is going to go through with this yes, and then the it's going to break up very all quickly after, but it was all bullshit. What I did not expect because the amount of times <laughs> he said, she's my dream girl. She's amazing. I'm not looking for anybody else. She's incredible. I'm ready. I've never been more ready in my life. I'm ready. Are you? Yeah. Okay. No psych. I'm not at all i don't like you at all um you, you and know by and, the, the way, and then his by the way, reasons were insane well no no but by the way i mean well i kind of i get the reason it's why he wanted to break up with her a week ago no, but i'm saying i'm saying like up against him, the backdrop of him being like we're good to go no but that's the thing but for him it wasn't like a oh hey i'm not quite ready to get married but i like you know it, it was like it was like no i will not go to the altar it just turned to him he goes i will not go to the yeah. altar he's like because i don't think i can trust someone who then takes something that i said was private and in that yeah. argument you put it all out there like he had it 
everything was locked and he loaded. He knew exactly he had what the, he like, was going to say. You said I'm not a strong couple. You used that against me. You, you said, said that, yeah, Johnny you and me said, were the strongest couple. You said, do I, you know, first of all, it, it's another like you caught me with the phone thing. He goes, the reason why I'm breaking up with you is because you asked if I even loved you. <laughs> it's like, that's not, like, I understand that being a problem, but like, that's why you broke up is because she, she was right. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it was a, it, and then the, the, and the by huge the way, sub, it was like, and by the way, like, and by the way, so shocking because he wasn't even like, I thought he was going to be like, Hey baby, we're a strong couple, but I just don't think I can like, I would have maybe even been like, I don't think we can, I, I don't think I can actually get married, exactly. but I do really love you. Let's he like literally was, ice it was like, cold. we're done. No, he's, and he said, I think he was down initially to be like, we can say we're keeping on dating. Yeah. But the second then that she argued back, he was like, no, we're done forever. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> it was so wild. It, and then was, she was like completely blindsided. Oh, now I couldn't was, tell if that was her just kind of again being like, kind of no she was compl- no she was bit. completely blindsided but think she, about it no i'm saying the delusion of like not picking up on the red flags you know which well, she, tends to be I a think, habit sometimes with I people on this, these shows i think that she thought that she was gonna get gonna get him to the altar and that he might say no on the altar right but sh- i think she was blindsided about that date she even said at one point, she was, oh my God, this is our final date. And he's like, really? And I'm like, did he just say really? He, of course he fucking knows it's right. their final date. He's working up to say to end this. So I think she was genuinely shocked that it's like, you're breaking up with me now after we just had our best day ever. Best day ever. And then, you know, she said multiple times that we're getting married. Like all that kind of shit has happened yes. the whole time. And then he goes, we've actually never talked about the whole getting married piece. <laughs> And she's like, what? No, I'm, I'm good to go. And he's like, cool, yeah. My thoughts are we should definitely break up. It was... Now, unless For it was... For him to f- ask... Yeah. yeah, I guess maybe if production was like, you have unless to do it, it this Frank way. Unless it was Frankenbit, like, crazy, and they but were barely him, into each other. But, but like, my God, they did a good job. him for her first... Yeah. We never talked about this. Or do you see yourself making it all the way down the aisle what do you and think then, we're doing i just picked out a dress to say, today no. you you got your suit i literally finished. bought a dress she said we were going over our our walking down the aisle and first we dance picked songs. out the colors and everything and and going through our songs and now you're asking me more you my thoughts are suit, on marriage you went got your suit fitted and and you were telling everybody that you'd get married today I mean, like, <laughs> like me and you have planned for a vacation for six months and then i'm like hey you ever thought about going on vacation and you're like i'm sorry what that's crazy so jarring they really got me man got me they good. got me good and they so i up. am obviously on pins and needles yeah. about this reunion with the two of them yeah, l- this is my theory cannot wait because because it, it just broke up and then, then that was it then it was it done done, done. we never saw them again never i thought we'd see again. like uh, maybe a moment Something. at the end itms nothing just done. nothing done um this is my theory before we hop to clay and ad which was another shocking moment okay uh i'm literally like, shaking thinking about it um this is my prediction for the reunion. I'm going to predict Chelsea is still single and she's going to do this. Like she's going to be really emotional. Right. But she's going to be like, no, but I, I, he's my friend and I do care about him. And she's going to do a lot of like a, I'm stronger than I was yesterday. And I love myself. And and that whole thing, that's going to be then her spiel, his spiel. He is almost engaged to another person mm. that's my guess i bet i can smell it from a mile away i bet jimmy is in a relationship yes, a serious I relationship that. i can literally see her yeah it's almost like I the good luck chuck her. thing where it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. he now found i can a, yeah. i can literally picture it and I, I can literally even see the person yes. that he's with she's not gonna be brunette she's gonna be blonde i can feel it in my bones okay i'm just mm. gonna put this out okay. there and and they've been in a relationship now for a yes. while and it's very serious yes and but she's not in a relationship no. she's working on herself yes that's my guess and they're gonna try to act like friends but then they're gonna start to squabble because yeah. they're gonna try to put it on yeah and then she's gonna let it slip and cry for my a while my favorite thing about her too is that she always tried to own her mistakes but then she couldn't help but also say he fucked up so she'd always be like you know i was really mad last night i'm sorry but you weren't perfect either and like every single time she admitted to like being a little a little like delusional oh she would always go but you know you too <laughs> but, you, but you too but let's not forget you too i for, i asked for forgiveness for both of us it was always that <laughs> Oh, is that okay? Wow, they took a Jimmy Chelsea. You really took us on a journey. I did not think you, that you, you liked her, but definitely thought you were going to go to the altar. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, okay, then we have our next couple who does make it to the altar. Yes, Ad and Clay. 
This <sighs> one shook me to the core. Okay? Because starting from episode 10 and episode 11 and all the way through the final episode, it was looking like smooth sailing to me. Mm. It was like we had the, you know, the meet with AD's mom who is... Literally, I would follow yeah. her to the ends of the earth. Well, both their moms are both just their mom. well, yeah, I mean, we'll we talk about Clay's mom, you unbelievable I mean? women. But like when she then when AD met with her mom and with Clay, she was like giving me like if she is a church and she is a pastor, I will like I will sign up for I'll that church. Back I'm, up. I'm back in. Yeah, back <laughs> in, baby. The way that she was number one loving on AD, but then loving on Clay mm -hmm. too. And like really like talking through Clay with the idea of like, yeah, sure, you have these these um, these um traumas because of your parents. Uh, but you know, you have to realize, think about that 25 years, 25 years, that's a success. And you can yeah. look at that as a success. She's like, I look at my marriage, even though we got divorced as a success because we did make it. And, or, you know, there were successes about it. And she's like, it's not your job. Um, like we do things as adults that end up, you know, coming to the children. And then one day, like, you know, sometimes we don't realize that, but then it's yours that you can change that and, and look at the, and she was just so encouraging and Clay was being super open. Yeah. Like the thing about Clay is what Clay does is that he sat and he would talk with his friends with AD and with um, AD's mom and be like, this is who I am. This is what I struggle with. This is what happened with my family. I'm nervous I'm going to do this. Yeah. He's telling AD, I'm scared about cheating. Like He's putting it all yes. out there. Yes. But it felt like Clay was really listening mm. when those things were being, you know, said to him. Yeah. And then even that moment where AD's mom was like, uh, AD told me that she's like, him I could follow. I was like my heart broke yeah. in a million pieces. She's never that said layer. that before no. type of thing. It's like yeah. him I could follow. Agreed. And I'm like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, that's that was the, the image that we were getting leading up to it. Obviously, we all knew <laughs> about Clay and the pods. Yes. And and you know, the the red flags that AD was feeling, and then some of the stuff that he said when they were in the Dominican Republic, and we were like, oh God. And we were all we kept joking about him being like, he's busting out the Bible verse, and he's like, I'm a new man. And you're like, well. But it felt to me like what we were getting is there'd be moments where you're like, oh, shit. But then it felt like he was he mm. was in that flow to me. That's mm. what it felt like. He was in that flow. Like, oh, my God, is A.D. this person who is just this goddess who is encouraging him to be in that space and shift and become this better man and all yeah. of this stuff and yeah. How are you feeling leading up to it? Because they, obviously they did a bunch of things, but you know, it was just like random conversations here, meetings here, yeah. but everything felt like it was like flowing smoothly. I mean, listen, I stand by this since day one. You can look at my notes. If, you, <laughs> if anyone wants to check me on this since the day they met in person, uh -huh. I no, since the day in the pods, AD is a symbol to him of something he wants, mm -hmm. but is not. And so when he first walks into the pods, he's smooth, funny, talking about all the chicks that like him, how good looking he is, all this stuff. AD kind of puts him in a plate, puts him in his place. And it's like, that's not what a real man's about. Blah, blah, yeah. He, he, and wow, you're right. Right. From that moment, he just like changed his personality into like this guy was just like, fantastic. I am happy to be here. Like we, we, we were like, because we first walked in, he was just like, the ladies love me. I'm good looking. Da, da, da. And all of a sudden it's just like, nice to meet you. AD. I'm a new guy. And so for me, I was kind of like, I didn't buy it at first. And I was like, okay, he's performing. Yeah. What I will say is he committed to trying this thing, but I didn't see it once feel inside out. It was very outside in. Fake it till you make it kind of energy. Yeah. And so I never like he he was amazing at like talking. He was amazing at like almost projecting what he wants to be, projecting the things that the values or the things that he wants. Because he would talk about it nonstop. Yeah. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this change. I'm ready for this thing. He'd even say stuff like marriage is like a test, and on test day, I want to ace this thing. And like it was always very like 
I have a job to do and we got to get this thing done and it's going to be great and it's going to be successful. It was never just like how much I love AD. It was never like, man, AD, like it was always AD. You make me want to be better. Mm. AD makes me want to strive. But it was never just like, I just love her for her. It, it, it always felt performative. Yeah. So my notes from day one were always like, he wants to change. And I think she represents something that he wants to be one day or be with someday or whatever. But he is not there at all. And so he never cracked. He never, he was just consistent with that messaging. But I always felt the messaging was very, not very emotionally connected. Yeah. And and that's something that I never saw him go up or well, down. I never he, saw him he, crying. He kept, I never saw him he, angry. He kept he just, talking about how he needs to work. He kept saying, I need to work on my emotions and my empathy. So I was just a little bit like, okay, maybe like, yeah, he's not going to be like, this is the big sobber. And he's like trying to work on that. Right. But see, I, this is you and I, were, he, real quick, you because, and I were arguing yeah. later about this after the whole wedding sequence, because Evan thinks he never was quite there. And I think he was. And I think the wedding day, seeing his dad threw him off. I don't That's think he I was, think. I don't I think, think he was, he was ever <laughs> there because he would even just, he would even say stuff like he was always reminiscing about his player days. Because he was always talking about like, you know, this is new to me and I've never been, well, you know, this, I don't want to cheat and it's going to be hard for me. And then yeah. he'd like talk to his guys and be like, oh, yeah, you know, the days of me hooking up with all those amazing, beautiful <laughs> women that I love so much to do uh, is over for me, boys. And then he would like be during that, during the, the the tuck shopping, he would look at everyone and be like, yeah, these guys were here when I was like, hooking up with all the girls, ladies, so when I had my first girls. girls. <laughs> like he, he was like... But 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 then he'd be he's like hanging up, up with, the jersey. He's like hanging up the jersey. He literally said yeah. like I'm hanging it up. Like that's way too much praise and way too much fantasy. Like of like those were the good old days. Right, now I hear I'm you. now yeah. I'm going into the sad days. It wasn't yeah, like, a, like now I'm graduating days. into the better days. Yeah. It's like oh, those were the good old days. Yeah, that's when I knew he wasn't there. Yeah, it was like constantly talking about what he wants to do. And how he's shutting himself down all the By time. By the way, I can, like, I, can I say something about Clay yeah. that makes me laugh? I, Clay, like, the thing that's funny about Clay is that I feel like Clay's a, like, really great at communicating. Like, he's, he, like, really, he can put all of his feelings out there. I know he says that he needs to work on, like, the emotional, like, and the empathy piece. But I feel yeah. like he does, like, a great job of being, like, vulnerable with, like, where he's at. Until, of course, I'm shocked at the very end by, like, what's been happening, you know, whatever. Um, but he, what makes me laugh about him is when all of a sudden someone will, like, ask him a question. I don't know if it's the way that they cut it and edit it. But like he talks and I think then that they're going to switch to the next person and then he's still, talking, he's still talking and then I think they're going to switch to the next person and he's still talking. There were so many scenes <laughs> where I was like, I thought like I looked away for a second and I thought then someone else was talking yeah. and it was like, no, it's still. <laughs> like, well, he does this thing where, <laughs> where someone will ask a question, he'll answer the question and then start answering possible other questions. So it's like if there's four people in a room and they all want to say something, he'll preemptively think I, you might ask me this. So I'll just answer it for you. It's like, thanks for asking me whether I really like AD. Yes, I do really like AD. And I think she represents a lot to me. And I used to be this way, but I'm no longer this way anymore. And I'm really about going forward. And, and financially, uh, what I'm working on, like he just starts answering questions no one's asked. And he just will go and go and go and go. Because again, he's, I think he's trying to convince himself. Oh, see, I feel like I'm this new person. I'm different. Yeah. I want to be this. It's like, no, you're, you're constantly selling yourself on this image of yeah. your, what you want to be. I think he waxes poetic. I think that this is who he is. I think he waxes poetic. I think he's a long... He, I think the biggest monologues in this yeah. go to Clay. I think he had the longest monologues in this season. But to, to your point, I think he's genuine. I think that's the difference. He's not lying. He's not um, manipulating. He's not doing those things. I think he's very genuine. He was so honest about his cheating, about his fear of not being the man that he wants, well, all that stuff. He was very honest about it. I think where he... Uh, underestimated was like how not far along in that process he was and this was all brand new like literally so, three weeks ago he was the guy he was talking about and so this was all new and so he's kind of realizing like I thought I could get there quicker than I did so I mean there's a conversation that him and AD do have at one point where he's like why is the altar a big deal like why do we have to do that and she's like for me personally like you mean on the altar. No, no, no. They had a conversation. Because okay, he think, also said that on the no, altar. I don't, I don't. <laughs> At the altar. He goes, so like, what is the big deal about this whole altar thing? And she's like, 
that like now we're doing this but they have, <laughs> like mic up like, on the in the in front of everyone but they had that conversation yeah. i think it was like it in was, episode 10 it was like at the their island in they their were, kitchen i think or something. yeah they were they were signing the 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 wedding yes. papers or whatever and uh the marriage license that's the word not the wedding papers <laughs> so um and he's like yes yeah, this is like not binding right like this like, is not legal this is just like a no but he said he's like i he's like i i just don't know why that's like such a big thing and she said listen i'm fully bought into this process like it's worked so far so like i'm it's a yes or no for me i i'm going to the altar um and if or and if you don't want to like i I can't keep dating that person and that's when he goes oh that's a big okay that's big ag like this is a big thing to process like he's like i hear you it makes sense to me i hear you but that's big to process so that was the moment where i was like maybe he's not gonna do it yeah but then from there it seemed at least like from the editing of everything and then how ad was feeling too that everything was going smoothly we see him with the suit we see him at their final dinner he's talking about them getting married and about kids and all of this and so i'm Helping like okay. pick out colors yeah so i'm like okay we're 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 good like yeah. we're there and even when they were interviewing him and his itms on the day of the wedding yeah. he was like this is my person right. i'm here we're here together i can't wait for this day <laughs> so i was like oh that was a, that was a moment that he had but he's all in like evan when i no. tell you Evan, when no. I tell you, I've never been in every season of this show. You saw me sobbing. Yeah. I was like crying, crying. Yeah. I have never been more emotionally invested oh, yeah. in a wedding than ADs and Clay's. The day that that wedding hit, I felt joy pulsating. You should have seen my notes. What I'm writing is I'm just like, oh my God, he did it. He he turned this new leaf for himself and ad is this goddess who was the inspiration that he needed and she's been there for him and then she's ready to follow him and he just needed someone who was like yeah like i'm i'll be there for you when you need a hand but i'm also following you and like all of this and i was like yes 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 and then that moment when ad's mom comes in to on the wedding day when she comes into ad's dressing room and she's bawling when she sees her and then she's like i met I met Clay's mom and I love her. And that's the woman I would pray to be your mother-in-law. And I'm crying. Yeah. They're at, they're, they're in the, they're in the AD process. is a legend. It, 80s mom's a legend. And, and then, I mean, and then that so moment, emotional. that moment where like, they're about to walk down the aisle and they see, and, and he's there and I, they see AD at the end yeah. and, and uh, Clay's mom looks at AD's mom who's crying and Clay's mom goes, it's okay, it's okay. Right. We did a good job. Right. And I had this moment. It was and I, so no, no, I start crying because I have this moment where I go, these women are so amazing. And AD's mom is single. And um, and her husband's passed away. And then obviously Clay's mom is single. It's and like I'm like, oh my God. Women. Well, I'm like, they're gonna, they're gonna be like they they have this deep they're connection. Gonna like sisters they're gonna connected. be like sisters, yeah. they're, gonna, they're gonna have each other, like be as they're they're like in their single mother. Like, oh my god, I was like, I was a mess. Yeah. Okay. So I have never felt more emotionally invested. And then we even have when 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 um Clay's dad shows yeah. up. So Clay's dad shows up. Mm-hmm. I right away, I was like, okay, he was talking about how his dad was suave. And I'm like, I get it. It yeah. jumps off the page. The way he came in and he was so sharp and bragging and- about his <laughs> track and field. Well, that was hilarious. When he said- He's like, you know, and you, you, you beat me one time. And just for the just for everyone at home, I was uh, all state in uh, high school, all state in college. I was Olympic. Uh, just so you know. Anyway, you <laughs> beat me that day. Like <laughs> that was unbelievable. You know what's so funny is the the analogy he was doing. I was ready to start crying again because he was like, you know, I remember that day when you beat me, and I thought he was going to be like, and here's another day where you're beating me because you're ready to get you're married, man and, and you're the me. better no, man, no, no. and you're walking down the aisle. And he's like, I remember that day you beat me. He's like, but I had all these accomplishments, and I was in shape too. <laughs> So I'm really proud of you, but still pisses me off a little bit, to be honest with you. <laughs> like that was the, it was definitely not like, you know, but then his dad gave him like 15 motivational quotes, yeah. but they were all very focused on like achievement, achievement, like exactly. win. you're the athlete who you're the all American, you know, won all these awards. I'm so proud of you because like you've been so successful. I can brag. With, all, I, my, I can brag at the bar with my friends about my son because he's like right. doing this, but not, but it's all about winning. And then we see Clay in the ITM say this was the most emotionally connected, like which is wild, like speech my dad's ever given me. And, he, and you remember too, he said, "Thanks for showing up." Yeah. So there was this level of like my dad might not even yeah. showed. So 
that was the moment. I know you and I disagree. No I way. think that was the moment that changed everything for Clay. I think all of a sudden when he came face to face with his dad, I think everything hit him because in that ITM, all of a sudden, then he's bringing up again. He goes, you know, my mom didn't know, but like he used to take me on the trips when he yeah. was cheating. I think I think he was ready. And I think I, I know you and I disagree, but I, I think the second he saw his dad, the fact that he was bringing up in his right before he's about to get married ITMs again about how his dad would take him on those trips and he was cheating. I think it hit him in the gut and he's like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Yeah. And I think there was maybe a, a uh, a hopeful feeling that he might have had that maybe dad would have done what mom encouraged dad to do later. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, what it leads us to is Clay's beaming. AD is just floating down the aisle. They have the cutest interactions together. He's like, she's like, oh my God, he's like the body. And she's like, yeah, take a look again. They're doing the whole thing. They're so, it was so joyous and contagious the pastor's and, like, and we know now that love's not about looks. And he's like, well, I didn't say all that. <laughs> yeah, and I thought it was funny. I was, was like funny. laughing. It was cute. They're beaming. He does his vows about how amazing she is. She does her vows about how amazing he is. They're not even looking. They don't have a script. I'm like, damn, they these right two are the, in Right down love. to the nub. And then she's like, I do. And then they get to him and he's like, no. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't think I can do that. He's like, I don't think I can do this. He's it like, was like, it was like signing up for a car lease. He's like, I just think today is not a good day for the lease. <laughs> yes. Like, what? And he's no, like, emotionless. That's what blew like, me away. And he was like, I don't think I can do that. And, uh, you know, uh, I just don't, I don't think it would be responsible. And I was like, as I'm listening to this, I'm like, this would be a very understandable conversation. Three weeks ago. Or yesterday. Yeah. Or earlier or honestly, an hour ago. But at the altar? And I know that they push them to do sure, that. But like, it was more that like in his ITMs and everything, it was like, we're doing this. There was yeah. no, it felt like it was like, we're doing this, at least from what we got from the edit. Yeah. And the fact that then like, that was when he said it. Yeah, I think. I was like, uh, yeah. but that's what makes me think that I'll stand by me that I think it was dad. I think dad, like yeah. seeing dad, I think it threw him off. I don't think so at all. He knew the stories. He was there for it all. Like, no, I know, but I think it hit him. No. From me, AD should have trusted her gut. From day one, she's like, I like this guy. He's nice, but it doesn't feel right. We saw that the first like week they were together. She was always kind of like, well, she's like, he's giving me red flags. He's and then she flags. just at some point released herself to yeah. the process yeah. and just fell into it. And so it wasn't like she was Chelsea where it was like day one, she was just like, Jimmy, we're going to get married. And then like blown yeah, away. No, no, right? She fell into it. It was like 80 was very apprehensive at first and was like, I like I you said, a lot. You're really good leave, looking. Really. That's what I'm saying. And then all of a sudden it's like after she met, maybe his mom really started shifting. And then I think that conversation with her right. mom too. And then all of a sudden shift. it was like, she fully embraced the process was now madly in love. I'm going to follow him. All this, all this, all this. And then she should have kept her guard up. She should have, she, I think she should have realized like, this is a good guy, but like, he's not ready. And I think that's what she always was saying from the beginning. Good guy, but not ready. And so, you know, I knew, I knew Clay wasn't ready because he would always talk to himself. Like a coach talks to a, a player. Yeah. There was never like a, Wow, I feel this way. I'm emotional about this. I'm up and down about this. I'm frustrated. I'm happy. It was always just, we got to go out there and win this thing. And yeah. it was like, that's a weird way to talk about your wife. You know what I mean? That's a good, that's a weird way to talk about your future life with someone. Yeah. And I think because he was trying to convince himself. Yeah. I mean, but, but then, okay. So they, so he says, no, I'm, my jaw is on the floor. Like I am shocked, shocked, shocked. She's shocked. That moment where then her mom is like, can I help you? Do I mean, I, Clay's mom's crying. They hug each other. I mean, it is, it is devastating mm. me to a point. I walked out. Evan and I didn't watch this at the same time. I walked out. I was, I, I was like, there were like oh, no, tears. It was like, I was like, what? Cause you were watching it before me. And I was like, what happened? Are you okay? I was like really upset. Someone die? And you're I just like, really upset. Yeah. It like really hit it me in the gut. You. And so then AD goes upstairs with her family. And then we see a moment with Clay's dad and Clay's mom. And that is what brought me to like a hysterical sobbing yeah. point where the level of woman that 
Clay's mom is, where she had pulled Clay aside and you could tell she was very disappointed, but it was also like, I've been in a long marriage before. If you weren't 100% sure, don't do that to the woman. Mm. So there was a level of like, I'm glad that you that you did end it instead of doing it however many years later or what happened with your dad or yeah. anything like that. But then when she was talking to Clay's dad and she was just like, here's the bottom line. Yeah. He wants to get married. He he put himself in this process. He wants this this, but because of what you did, you owe him an apology and you owe him a conversation. Mm. And that moment on camera was like beyond powerful yeah, to me. Yeah, it was really heavy. Like he was then crying and then he was kind of doing this thing where he's like, yeah, well, you know, but I had the, the, the like, I didn't have that as an example. And she's like, I hear you. And I was there for you and I stood by you. But like, I found out things from Clay that I didn't know before mm. during this process. And he is hurt. Like he needs someone to come in and apologize and help him process all of this. And dad tried to do the suave thing a little bit going, well, he just needs to meet someone like you. And then she hit him back and was like, you know, she's like, you met someone like me and you didn't treat me good. And it was like, oh my God. But like, she like the way that she was able to just be this, like, I want to be that woman. Like the way that she was able to just be like this strength of not letting, I like to not be caught up in the emotion of finding out new revelations about your ex-husband and and be there like she grabbed his hand and she was like i was there with you like i got you but like you need to talk to him and then just being so there for her son in this moment was like beyond yeah. to me that's when i was like started to like literally dry heave cry because mm. again if you come from a family where there's been like infidelity yeah. and like you feel like that moment you felt it it was like as a kid like i felt that like i yeah. was like pulse it was pulsating in yeah. me um, but then Clay goes back up to talk to AD and that was in another moment where it was like, AD is an unbelievable person. Yeah. I would have been losing my mind and she, I mean, AD is elegance 2024 to like the max. Amazing. <laughs> like sh the way that she handled this and she heard him, listened to him let him like even have his moment of like leaning on her and like giving the final kiss goodbye. And then he's like, I have to go, huh? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, I don't want to go. I was sobbing. Mm. Like, I don't want to go. And she's like, you need to go. And that she then just stood firm where she was like, I love in the ICM. She's like, I love this man. But like, no, I thought the, the, the crowning moment, she was literally like a queen sitting on a throne at the end. Yeah. And I thought I was so ha I was so like happy for her that she figured out this because he, he said he said two things. First of all, he said, "Am I madly in love?" No. When he was, yeah, which I was like, "Oh really shit, okay." Because like we we've been under this we, we've been under this idea that you're just not ready for marriage. But yet. I also don't know if I. He also gives me this energy because of like the trauma that he was like processing through. That he's almost like I don't like he might be, but like not recognize it. Mm. I don't know. That's my other okay. thing. But anyway, um, but he said to her. What's been so amazing about this is how much I've learned about myself. And she's like, yes. yeah, cool. But like, I'm not. I was a sacrifice. I'm not a sacrifice. I'm not a sacrifice for you to learn about yourself. Yeah. Like this is you're you like used me basically to like as a therapist almost or something. Yeah. And then she's like, that's not what I'm here for, basically. And he was like, oh, uh, uh, and that that was like that's when she, I think she realized I am an idea for you. Mm. I'm an idea of maybe what you want to be with or what you want to become or yeah, whatever. Ultimate, like yeah. I am not, but, 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 but I'm not that. But actually. I'm a person. So, so then, you know, that's when after everything, she's like, I'm not going to be seeing him anymore. It was like, a, Oh, cause he kind of left thinking, I think we're going to be dating. Yeah. And then she realized, which I'm really happy that she did. She realized like, no, I'm not going to continue to just be like your stepping stone into being a better mm -hmm. man or whatever. I mean, she, Ooh. It like broke me. It literally broke me into a million pieces. Yeah, I was, was absolutely heavy. bawling. And I now, what I want is I just want the world for AD. She I want the her world. to be the next Bachelor. Like I want her, yeah. I know that it, this is a Netflix, but I want her them to like cast her in like a series where then she's the lead. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't get enough of her. There she's was even amazing. a moment, by the way, where I think it was during the Bachelorette party. Like she's just so fun. She's the only one who's just not unhinged. 
Well, Amy, neither there is Amy. That's and, true. But like, <laughs> she's just, you know, I guess up against the backdrop of some of these people. Yeah. You know, you're just like, wow. Like, no, she's, she crushed but it. But she was just like, her and Amy during that bachelorette party, they were just so, they, it, they, they were, were just fun. like living while the other boys were by like some random lake, yeah. like having okay. to like sweatshirts. First of all, they were like, having like a legitimate party. They were kind of playing like, they were doing like sexy dances. The they girls. were drinking the yeah. girls. The guys were at some weird like deserted like lake with just him and Clay and like three other people. It was like the girls had like 15, 20 people there. It was like a vibe. They were like, like a club energy. Was, they were like yeah. club, the guys were literally in some weird deserted lake playing cornhole. And they also had like shirt like sweatshirts that said like, like bachelor the, the party. Ba- no, no, or no, 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 no. It was like it was like the grooms here. And then at one point, like <laughs> Clay's like talking to his friend about like, first of all, there was a moment where him and Clay, Clay and his friends are, are hanging. And then like Johnny's not there. So Johnny's with his one yeah, friend no, over no, there. I know. And, and, and Clay's having this like super intimate conversation about AD. And then they zoom out and the bartender's just standing right there in between <laughs> them. This, this woman's just sitting there like listening to Clay, like just wax on about AD. And she's just sitting there like it was so strange. That's called they had to do it together. I know, that I was know. Called, they but just the difference it, they was that you can tell it was it. like it was like oh, like like Amy and Ad like had a blast, and all their friends got along, and everyone was like partying. It, and it was such a great if like. If they vibe. all got together, they'd want to do double dates, and Clay would be like waiting to leave. <laughs> yeah, just just to, like, cool. How much longer do I have to be here? Yeah, Johnny, that's cool, man. Yeah, great, it's great. Anyway, tell I gotta me go more to work. about vasectomies. Yeah, I gotta go to work. <laughs> totally totally but like yeah no i just like ad but there was a moment where amy was like like a- ad that's my scorpio queen yeah. and as soon as she, that's my scorpio queen i was like oh my god no wonder i'm obsessed with her you and they know, were joking you about know i'm obsessed with scorpio women yeah that is like my obsession and they were joking like, about Duh. not having sex and like he's like, she's like you haven't had sex yet and then she's like and she's like i don't believe that for one yeah. second she's, she's like, like she's, she's like, no. fucking <laughs> yeah she's fucking that man that was hilarious she's like she's way too spicy <laughs> Oh, that was funny but i love her and yeah. i want them to put her in a situation yeah. so i hope we get more of ad i can't wait to see her again at the reunion but my goodness yeah. i just we'll see we'll, we'll see where they're at but i'm assuming they did not they are not together i'm assuming she no. held firm and was the like no was we're done that, no so that was a shock um and then lastly we had our one our successful one, couple one successful Evan, couple one that's it one just one just one couple just one. that's wild i don't even know if we've ever had like have we ever had a uh love is blind final episode where there were only two people that went to the altar i feel like we always have a few oh, at people. least three and then maybe one or two people back out yeah. but yeah <laughs> two only two people went to the altar and only one, one only one came out now sorry everyone it's gonna be a little bit shorter here because i do have to go to the doctor soon but amy and johnny yeah there's not much to say with these two except smooth sailing, smooth sailing, smooth sailing from the get from the day that they met in the pods to the day that they got married. The only drama that we ever had was the birth control, and which which is funny because I will say what this says to me is that Johnny doesn't have a lot of sexual experience. That's the really? energy it gives me. Yeah, because he's oh, okay. so scared of having a kid. Yeah, that it's almost like when he was young, his parents said, do you want to have a kid at 15? And right, she's like, right. oh, that's stuck in his brain. You know what I mean? And then he doesn't have a lot of sexual experience because I, I would say if you had a lot of sexual experience, you would have dealt with this fear and figured out ways around it. Right, where it's like, I mean, you again, condom. That's what I'm saying. Scared of Whatever using a it is, you would have... scared of using a condom. But that's what I'm saying. So yeah. if you, like, uh, the vibe is that he's, he's not very experienced because or else you would have been figuring out all this he's very all about safe sex now i do and have she's to tell just kind of like are you okay like we can figure it out and he's <laughs> like no you need to have a chastity belt on at all times and i will wear leather condoms i will use a calf skin you know what i'm saying like <laughs> he is so scared he's so scared now that condom which means he's gonna I have know. a kid soon i mean it's like, you're putting way too much pressure on it bro you're gonna have a kid in three months if you keep talking like this by the way though that that conversation that they had was the one time that i was like dying laughing with them yeah. when they were sitting together and he's like so here's the thing um i did look into getting a visectomy a little and, crazy um i'm gonna have to pass on that i knew i <laughs> threw it out there before but what i'd like to explain to you is he's like there's a there's a, a clipping sensation that goes on and he's like in the itms he's like so i don't know if they talked about this in sex ed with <laughs> other schools but i didn't know that when i threw out that i'd get a vasectomy yeah. that it was gonna be like this much of a thing he's, he's like, like i think i'm fine <laughs> with sticking with hand jobs for the next five years <laughs> he basically that's kind of he's like listen i am fine 
<laughs> and he goes, he goes, he goes, yeah, you know, so here's the thing. Like, I know I threw out that I might get a vasectomy yeah. so that you don't have to go on birth control. I'm going to have to take that back. He's like, back. and I did do also research on birth control, male birth control, but I'm not looking to be a lab rat. Yeah. So you're going to have to take the hormones. Yeah. I was just like, oh, my that God. was killing me. It was such a guy conversation to and be he's like, like, and I don't like condoms. So <laughs> yes. it really, it, we're back to square it one. Such a dude conversation to be like, I'm not going to be uncomfortable. So you're going to have to figure out how you're uncomfortable. I was I thinking about getting like a, like a cork or a plug or something like that. It's like, it's so funny to me. It's just like, it's just like, I'd like, I mean, ultimately I know that she ended up saying that because of a health issue that she has, that they've encouraged yeah. her to go on birth control. So she's now, this is my one question, Evan, we get to the wedding. They have that conversation. And she's like, okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll consider going on birth control. They get to the wedding. They still haven't apparently been intimate in that way. Right. She, she, she said, We're, we've been having fun, but we just but haven't. She, but, so they haven't been having intimate in that way. But I'm like, when is she going to, when are they going to start? Because that conversation they had about the birth control was like three days before the wedding. And they had like, it was like their fourth one. Yeah. So I'm like, I wonder, maybe we'll find out at the reunion. I mean, I, that feels way too personal. The whole thing felt very much like, I feel like I shouldn't be in this conversation, but you know, Vanessa, you know, Vanessa at the reunion is going to be like, so you got the BC popping yet? You guys doing it? You banging yeah. yet? You know, there's other ways, you know, it's like, hey, Nick haven't had sex in a need- decade, so it's really not a problem. If you need anything to get you in the mood, my husband's new cover track, tell you how it feels sitting up there. <laughs> will really get you in the way. He covers some cool <laughs> <All> tracks. These... <laughs> but anyway, so that's really their big yeah. hurdle. She had said before, I'm nervous about, you know, the meeting of my father because I need his blessing. We meet her dad who is it's just incredible. I don't know, made of sugar. He's just, well, and also like, like made of love and sugar, but also Santa like Santa Claus, but also like inspirational dream maker guy he's kind of like captain america over here being like i created this life for my family and now oh. i'm blessing you and you're like holy shit no dude. Like, no he's and then and then that <sighs> moment where he literally was like let me bless you right. and grabs her hand and keeps kissing her hand no, he's, I, I was like i who who is this father and how can we all get him how can like, we all get one of these <laughs> the toughest guy mixed with the sweetest softest guy he was you know, just like, strength and sweetness combined in one human being and then we cut to because by the way nothing happened with them except no, only just, just smooth sailing the they're like yeah. having a bonfire and eating s'mores and being Glamping cute, and cute yeah. nothing yeah we go straight to the wedding day and dad is in her bridal suite Mm -hmm. talking to the other just absolute angel johnny's sister dude and he's like you're now johnny's family too dude johnny's family and her family i mean can you believe and then yeah and then and and then amy's dad is just like her dad david is just like you're now my daughters and i now have you are our family and they were like we've we just we knew the second we saw her that we were going to be a family i mean there was no question that these two were getting married the family is incredible the the combination of the family yeah when your family gets along on that level too loved each other like the 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 fact that they were embracing and crying together before they were even walking down like the aisle and that the and and then you know there, there was there was literally no hiccups and johnny was just like this is my girl mm-hmm. there was one moment at the tux fitting that i will say was strange that nick was like so johnny you're sold right you know da, 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 da. and johnny's friend goes yeah you know um i've met amy and she's a very uniqueness very unique and uh, johnny's johnny's into that like what type of friend fucking... tr- the friend tried to have a moment on television and he's like fuck I was like, what type of fucking <laughs> thing? i'm like amy amy is a, a beautiful wonderful right. woman but like to if i was amy watching it i'm like your friend said i'm unique right. and johnny likes yeah, that by the way jeff isn't coming over anymore <laughs> No. Jeff tried to have a moment on television. He's like, oh, um, well, she is very unique. And I, uh, fuck, uh, never mind. Don't use this. <laughs> I like, but I mean, like, but we're reaching. There's nothing. They were, no, they, they were literally, just in love. They literally, now I will say this. When they walked down the aisle, so right before they walked down the aisle, we uh, meet her brother for the first time. Yeah. And he puts his head against her. And they have that moment of so just like, sweet. there's deep love for each other. And the fact that her dad and her brother walked her down the aisle just made my heart so full precious when she got down there though yeah i don't know if it was the editing they were trying to fuck with us she seemed nervous she wasn't like big smile she was a little quiet and he's like you look beautiful of course and it was a little awkward yeah. and i was like oh no oh no 
And then they had the shortest vows in the history of vows. Yeah. Johnny's brother-in-law, by the way, I love that for the first time ever, a family member is marrying. He's yeah, like, yeah, we're yeah, so yeah. good. Johnny's brother-in-law is yeah. marrying them. And he's like, so would you guys like to say something? And she's just like, you're you're my forever. And he's just like, I knew, know you're the one. And then they were quiet. They literally said like one yeah. statement. I was like, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's the the, le- the less you got to say in your vows, the more that you just know that you just are, you want to get married. Let this thing be done quick. And uh, they end up saying I do. And they have the celebration. Yeah. And their families together at the end are just, it's stunning. They're, they're stunning. They, it they, was they, a beautiful thing. And, you know, and what's and beautiful they kept too, saying too. Sorry, they kept saying too, love is blind, love is blind because he's yeah, not Amy's type. So yeah. I was about to say, oh, and they also proved. Sorry that I interrupted you, and I ruined your point. You ruined my point. Um, you stole all my <laughs> takes, and we had the same takes. No, but uh, that's the thing: is it's like not only were they the mo- the successful couple, mm-hmm. but they also proved the experiment. So it wasn't like two people that totally were each other's types got together, and you're like, yeah. okay, cool. That's it. Was, but it was like she was not into that his vibe immediately, no. immediately, and then fell in love, and like. And it was so cute that he's like, yeah, she's a girl that wouldn't even have looked at me in a bar. And the fact that like. And the like, fact that he's comfortable with that does say a lot about him too. Huge. You know what huge I mean? Huge confidence. I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. Like, no, it's, I don't it's, think I'm confident enough to be like, she's not into me, but like I grew on her. Yeah. Which is like incredible. Like I think that like they have something so. so honest. Sp- that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I don't think I'm like, I think that's a real show. It shows how confident he is and how mm-hmm. like honest and real he is so that was that was beautiful now i we say absolutely congrats to the stunning beautiful couple yes um now at least as of now when i checked um the couples haven't posted any confirmations Uh, of like are they together together. what's happening i i'm assuming they're making them wait maybe they give it a few days for people who haven't tuned in yet to not spoil it Maybe they're making them wait for the reunion. Maybe we won't Watch find Jeremy out. Jeremy and Laura's back together. Like, what? <laughs> but like, we didn't have the yeah. confirmation that like Johnny and Amy are still, still together. Um, That'd be sad. I'd be re- it's Evan. Be so I, c- I don't think I'd be able to handle it if Oof. like Johnny and Amy were together. But I, I'm sure they are. Yeah. I think that they just don't post because she's like posting uh, uh, pictures and videos from the from the um bachelorette party oh, God, and okay. of the wedding day just of her got it but um, i think that yeah. but it's it's it, i think that they have to wait yeah. i think that they have to wait because you know i've been checking too to see like what's ad gonna say is clay is gonna say something yeah. like like are chelsea and, and jimmy are they gonna say something like yeah. what's going on you know yeah anywho what a fucking season incredible i am not gonna lie i'm a little sad it's over already i know it was fast because they're just dropping 47 episodes a day i kind of wish like i really miss i'm like really sad that we're not gonna get like a new season right away where we meet new people in the pods i kind of almost wish that it was like the bachelor and they dropped one episode a week. i completely agree i want to savor the yeah, show i want to savor more. it instead of having I, like, to really enjoy jam talk- it all into one I enjoy episode talking about I it i want to like recap it as much as we recap the I bachelor know. i know I know. So I know we jammed three episodes into one today, everyone, but we will be doing the the reunion, yeah, the which reunion. is just the reunion. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about all the tea. So stay tuned for the reunion and us covering that. We'll keep you updated on when we're going to drop it. Um, I'm so excited for this reunion. It's going to be awesome. And uh, tune in next week to Joey's Fantasy Suites. So sex week, sex week, sex week. We love you all. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Have a great. The season's not quite done yet. Not quite so done. I'm not going to say quite done, but right, cheers. But cheers for this one. <laughs> we love you all. Congrats to Amy and Johnny, and um, we'll uh, we'll talk next week. Love y'all. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.